Good morning to you. Welcome back. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on S3. Good morning, Graham. Good morning, Zoza. You look gorgeous this morning. And she's not even finished getting dressed and you're going to help her choose her outfit for the day in just a moment. Uh, welcome to the show. It's going to be one of those inspirational and educational and hopefully empowering sessions today. We are focusing on breast cancer awareness this morning and we've got some amazing personal stories to guide us through that. Definitely. And it's all about testing, detection, doing your self-examinations, and ladies, trust your gut. I've heard so many women say they went to the doctor, had the test, came back clear, but their gut told them yep. to get a second opinion. So we will be unpacking all of that as we gear up for breast cancer awareness. Month. Yeah, and we've got some amazing things to discuss within that conversation. I mean, one thing that's come to light recently, a sports bra that can help with early detection. But once again, that onus rests on your shoulders. You have to do your self-examinations. You have to test. And like Zozo says, if you hear that voice in your head, if you've got that gut feeling, trust yourself. You know your body better than anyone else. We're going to have a lot of fun in between all of the health chats this morning. And of course, we're going to get you moving. We've got some great physical activities thrown into the mix as well, which means we need to bring in one of the big guns, a man whose smile is about to light up this studio. Good morning, Sunshine. How are you, Al? Yeah, let's light it up. Thank you so much, Gianzo. You guys are looking amazing, by the way. And Mzanzi, you are too. I can feel it. I know I can't see you, but I can feel it. You're looking good. You're feeling good. It's an incredible day. It's Health Tuesday, and that's what we're out here to do, to serve you. And as you are aware, of course, this month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we want to chat to you and find out, have you been close to a loved one? Is there someone that you know that has been affected by breast cancer? Maybe you can send a message today, a message of hope, a message of inspiration, or just something that can get us moving moving in a way that gets us grateful, I think, number one, and more importantly, celebrating the life that we do have. And today we're going to be serving you and giving you every pointer that you can to help you navigate this issue and maybe even serve you before it occurs. So Mzanzi, what are you waiting for? Come through on our socials. It's 63 408 or you can send us a voice note. We're on all social media channels. We're diving into this conversation and ready to serve you. So come through with those comments and don't forget to use the hashtag Expresso Show. What are you waiting for? It's time to get this magic on the road. But first up, official duties must commence and Zoe standing by. <laughs> Thank you, Raul. Well, let's start off with national headlines. President Cyril Ramaphosa says green hydrogen has potential to significantly grow the country's economy and create thousands of jobs. Ramaphosa delivered the keynote address at the second Green Hydrogen Summit in Cape Town, which aims to create awareness from partnerships and source funding to use green hydrogen. Its production involves using solar power to split water into oxygen and hydrogen. Green hydrogen can then be used in energy-intensive industries such as iron smelting. The Eastern, Northern and Western Cape have signed an MOU to collaborate in developing green hydrogen. And staying with our local news, the SA Roads Agency, Sunral, says repair work has begun on the N2 at Bort River in the Overberg region of the Western Cape. The agency says earth moving equipment is on site and preparations have been made. Widespread flooding caused extensive damage to road infrastructure in the province last month. Part of the N2 washed away after the Bot River flooded its banks and communities were cut off from the outside world. Sanral says it will take about a month to complete. Moving to news beyond our own borders, the Serengeti National Park in Tanzania has for the fifth time in a row been chosen as the best on the African continent by World Travel Awards, a global body that aims to reward excellence in travel and tourism. The Serengeti, popular for its huge wild, wild wildebeest migration, has bagged the award every year since 2019. Other African contenders include Botswana's Central Kalahari Game Reserve, Namibia's Itosha National Park, Uganda's Kipido Valley National Park, and South Africa's Kruger National Park, and Kenya's Masai Mara National Reserve. And five sports, including cricket, have been included in the 2028 Los Angeles Olympics after receiving approval from the International Olympic Committee. The organizers also introduced lacrosse, squash, base basketball and softball. These were approved for inclusion at a meeting of the All Games organizers in Mumbai, India. Each host city can, in accordance with the rules of the IOC, request that certain sports be included in the Olympic Games. And South Africans may have an extra day holiday this year. 
This as President Cyril Ramaphosa considers declaring a public holiday should the box win the World Rugby Cup, the World Rugby World Cup final in France on the 28th of October. The president joked that he was still struggling to get hold of his French counterpart, Emmanuel Macron, to commiserate about Saturday night's game, regarded as arguably the best match in history of rugby and won in magnificent fashion by the box. Ramaphosa congratulate, congratulated Jacques Nienamer, the box chief coach, in a telephonic phone call after the match and pledged to be in Paris for the final to watch the box lift the Webb Ellis Trophy for a record fourth time. Well, those are your morning headlines. Let's take a first look at your sport. All right, thank you so much. So let's dive right into sport with a bit of a tail of the tape right now as we hone in on the Rugby World Cup. So Ireland's 15-month dominance in World Rugby rankings has been toppled following their defeat, of course, to New Zealand over last weekend. The Springboks have now ascended to the top spot, courtesy of that thrilling 29-28 win over World Cup hosts France, who were at the time ranked second. So this marks South Africa's debut at the number one position since Ireland's reign began. The All Blacks occupying second spot, with Ireland now in third and France dropping down to fourth. England moves to fifth after their 30-24 victory over Fiji. Argentina's 29-17 win over Wales now propels them to seventh place. Wales in eighth, Australia still languishing down in ninth and then Fiji stands at 10th. It all makes sense again. We love that. Now let's turn to the other World Cup and in cricket, a thrilling match of the 2023 Cricket World Cup was leg spinner Adam Zampa who was the star taking four wickets for just 47 runs. Mitchell Marsh and Josh English shone with uh, 50s as Australia secured their first victory, defeating Sri Lanka by five wickets. Dominant performance there. Australia successfully chasing down Sri Lanka's total of 209 in just 35.2 overs at a very windy Ikana Stadium. Despite losing early wickets, Marsh's half century in partnerships with Marnus Labuschain and English were crucial in their build. And Glenn Maxwell's quickfire 31 and Marcus Stonis's 20 sealing victory for Australia. This win leaves Sri Lanka with three consecutive losses in the tournament. Now, to return to a story that uh, Zoe touched on just a moment ago, T20 cricket, recently showcased at the Commonwealth Games and Asian Games, has now secured a spot at that 2028 Los Angeles Olympics. So the LA locally, uh, Local Organizing Committee's proposal gained unanimous approval from the International Olympic Committee members in Mumbai. And this decision incorporates a bundle of those five fresh sports comprising men's and women's T20 cricket, baseball and softball, flag football, lacrosse and squash. And the IOC's executive board had earlier endorsed the package over the weekend. And the IOC's final vote on Monday unanimous, unanimously welcoming these additions. And I think we add our voice to that. We want to see more South Africans at the Olympics. Now let's turn to football and veteran Banyana Banyana player Janine van Beek is set to feature in the team's lineup for the upcoming 2024 CAF Women's Olympic qualifiers against the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. So coach Desiree Ellis will finalize that squad soon and these matches will serve as a farewell to van Beek concluding her incredible career. With 183 international caps, Van Beek is on the verge of becoming the most capped player on the continent if she plays in both matches. And the first leg takes place on October the 25th in uh, DR Congo, and then that'll be followed by a home match in South Africa. What a swan song for this absolute legend. So we cannot wait for that, um, and we cannot wait for the rest of the show and today. So let's see what weather is going to set the tone. Riles got the latest. Thank you so much, G-Man. Yes, let's dive into our weather news for the first time this morning. And a disaster management teams across KwaZulu-Natal have been put on high alert as heavy rains are expected to continue lashing the province. Now, an orange level 6 warning has been issued for disruptive rain, leading to flooding of roads and settlements and damage to property, as well as major disruption of traffic flow along the coast and interior of the King Techuayo and Umkunyakuda districts of KwaZulu-Natal. Now, a yellow level 2 warning has also been issued for disruptive rain in places over the Ugu district, the Durban metro, the eastern parts of Umgungundlovu, Ilembu district, the western parts of King Echuayo, and the eastern parts of Zululand district, as well as the Mvotu local municipality. And the western and central interior of Limpopo has received a yellow level 2 warning for severe thunderstorms, damaging winds, large amounts of small hail, and heavy downpours. 
Well, thoughts go out to all those affected out in KZN. For now, though, it's time to take a dive in to see what exactly your temperatures will be like for the day. Well, the temperatures are definitely bringing about polarities and we can see how wet the conditions are in KZN. For now, though, it's that beautiful time of the morning. Now, have you have got a sunrise picture that you can share that encapsulates the morning? Are you just dying to share this beauty for us and uh, know that it is going to set the bar? Well, come through and send your picture in because we've got a competition running all throughout the morning as we run Expresso. We've got a winner to announce. You can also win 100 bucks, and you can just send the number through to 063-408-8863. So, an example... We've got a winner this morning, <laughs> and it goes away from Lakeside. Now, I'm talking about the one and only, let's see who it is. It is Owen from Lakeside, and uh, this is what he had to say while sharing this picture. He lets us know that it's the new beginning of every day that inspires a life of gratitude, as tomorrow is never promised. Live in Peace. Look at that shot from Owen. I love the contrast there. You've got those dark tones just being contrasted by the sun about to come through the horizon there. That's like a pre-burn before the sun even comes up, and I absolutely love it, Owen. Well played. Magic stuff indeed. And Mzanzi, keep those pictures coming. Don't forget we've got that competition running all throughout the morning, so we'll do it again in an hour. You can win 100 bucks. Just send it through. Send a beautiful voice note or a message with that picture, and you could be a winner. For now, though, let's find out what's happening with the rest of the show. <laughs> Well, let's level up our summer wardrobes with those temperatures and let's add some vibrant colors and bold prints. Since today is hashtag Tuesday Tuesday, I need you to help me choose between two beautiful showstopper dresses for today's show. So option one is this printed dress. It is a sleepless dress finished with a tiered maxi silhouette for an effortlessly stylish look. So this is option one. Or are we gonna go for option two? Two, which is this very beautiful puff sleeve midi dress crafted from responsibly sourced cotton for a comfortable and chic summer look. Now the choice is up to you. Both dresses will be styled with a pair of ankle, um, ankle tie sandals. And you really is, these are those dresses that you can dress up as well as dress down. So head on over to our social media pages, choose your favorite dress. Are we going for option one or option two and vote for your favorite look? Don't forget to include that hashtag style by Woolies. Lady, ladies are the boss. Nighttime to shine, no time to get lost. Oh man, we cannot wait to welcome you back to our brand new studio, which we are loving. It gets better every time I walk in. Um, and uh, it's even better when we get to have the kind of conversations that we're going to enrich you with today. We are covering the importance of screening. That's where it all begins. When we talk about breast cancer, the responsibility, the onus is on you to start your checking and to start getting screened and listen to that voice. But we're going to give you some amazing tips in just yeah, a moment. 100%. It could literally save your life. On yep. top of that, we're going to be diving into Hilary Lum's journey, a double cancer survivor wow. who's coming through and not only sharing a story, but sharing a little se a session when it comes to fitness as well. So absolutely impressed. Cannot wait for this. Get ready. No get excuses, your, Get your bro. work our clothes on, and we'll see you just after this. <laughs>
It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso on S3. Now, the month of October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And according to the Cancer Association of South Africa, around 19.4 million women ages 15 and older live with a risk of being diagnosed wow. with breast cancer. Along with cervical cancer, breast cancer has been identified as a national priority with increasing incidents occurring. Thankfully, it is a cancer that is very treatable when caught early. And joining us to shed some light is surgical specialist, Dr. Sizwe Makoba, joining us on the couch. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, Zoe. Good morning, Graham, and good morning to the viewers as well. Um, thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you for doing what you do um, as you're calling every day. Just wondering what those hands are insured at. Um, <laughs> magical hands. This is a conversation that needs to be had because this feels like awareness is where the battle is being won. If we can get people to be aware of self-screening, what's available, speaking to their doctors, we're winning this battle. But I think maybe a good jumping off point for us today would be where breast cancer fits into the greater ecosystem of cancer. What is breast cancer specifically? Kind of prioritize the, or put it into its place for us. Well, I mean, to be honest, I mean, breast cancer is probably one of the, the most common cancers around. And it's definitely one of the most common cancers in women. Yeah. So that just literally puts it into perspective. Um, you know, and you know, thousands of women are diagnosed with breast cancer, you know, every single day worldwide. And what we try and put across is the fact that, you know, if you come in early and you're screened early, then, you know, breast cancer does not have to be, uh, you know, something that's, that's that, you know, that'll, that'll change your life too much. You know, you, you can be treated. The earlier, the better. That's the message that we try and, and put across. And I mean, as a girl, we go, you know, you go to the gynecologist, you're constantly told to do your self-examinations, you're being taught how to do your self-examinations, do it in the shower, do it after your shower. Who is at risk? Because this is quite scary. It says here, according to the National Cancer Registry, there's a lifetime risk of one in 27 women in South Africa for sure. breast cancer. Yeah, it's very high. There's no doubt about that. I mean, I think if you're looking at, at risk, um, if you've got someone in your family, you know, we always talk about a first degree family member. So you, that's your mom, your grandmother, your sister, et cetera, you know, and the younger that person was diagnosed, the higher the risk of breast cancer. Okay. So, and, and, and those are the things that we look at as, as specialists, you know, as breast, uh, as breast practitioners, you know, uh, in terms of your screening, because not everybody must be screened at the same age. Yeah. So if you've got those risk factors, you know, uh, those first degree relatives, if you've, if you've had previous breast cancer, for instance, you know, we need to screen you a little bit earlier you know um, and we need to be a little bit more aggressive in terms of our screening as well even the language that you're using speaks to an empowered space it speaks to victories that have been won we've been lucky enough to feature some incredible testimonials of double cancer survivors people who have shown that you can power through breast cancer but you need to do the testing what does that look like what are we looking out for when we talk about those signs and symptoms of breast cancer specifically um, break it down for us well, look, I mean, uh, the, the, the most common sign is really a breast lump. And that's how you, you pick these things up. And that's also the, the sign that's got the most stigma attached to it. Ah, for you know? sure. But what I'd like to, say, to put across to the viewers as well is that, you know, um, a breast lump, for the most part, is not a cancerous lump. Okay. However, we can't sit on our laurels and say, yeah. you know, this is now just a benign lump, benign meaning that it's not cancerous, uh, so you have to have it checked out. So a breast lump and any changes within the breast itself, you know, and every woman will know there's changes that happen on a monthly basis with the breast. If you're gaining weight, for instance, the breast does change, but, you know, if there is a lump or there's any new changes within the breast, then that's something that must be really be looked at. And so many cancer survivors have spoken about, as you highlighted this morning, that little voice in your head, that gut feel that intuition you know your body better than anyone else that's true now doctor I wanted to know from you we keep saying go for regular screenings and you know as a woman I know that but yet there are still so many women that don't do that mm. do we perhaps know what's stopping them from doing the different screenings or self-examinations I think it's very simple so I think it's just fear yeah you know I think it's fear of the unknown um, and it's something that I see on a daily basis. You know, even when someone has been diagnosed, you have now that fear, you know, what is the next step? What happens afterwards? What happens to my children? What happens yeah. to my husband? So it's just that fear. But, you know, the message that I always try and convey is the fact that, you know, it's better to know than not to know. And do something, yeah. And do something about it. And the earlier you, we, we know, then, you know, your treatment can be tailored such that it might not be, you know, extensive treatment. 
mm. or, or as invasive or shake the foundations of your life. Um, I absolutely understand that. And I know this isn't the case all the time, and it does call into question, I suppose, members within the medical fraternity because of the age different. But there was a cancer survivor, Melissa Willemser, who recounted a story about the first doctor that she encountered who said because she was so young, there was no chance of it being cancer, so let's just ignore that. How important is it then to trust your own instinct in these spaces? When you think of all of the, the patients that you've had to come through your doors, how important is that, the, the, the knowledge of self? No, that's extremely important. Um, I must say, just to, just to put that into perspective, you know, age does play a role. We only speak of cancer, and any cancer. You yeah. know, it's a disease of the older you get, it's the higher you risk. Yeah. And men as well, the higher you, the, the you risk of getting cancer. However, it doesn't mean that if you are a 20-year-old or you are a 25-year-old, you can't have cancer. In fact, recently I had a 25-year-old with breast cancer. Yeah. Sure. You know, so um, the, the moment you, you hear that voice in your head and you see something different, you feel that breast lump, you know, I think you must literally just go and have that checked out and just make sure that it's nothing. Often, it is nothing, yeah. but then at least you will know mm. that there's nothing to worry about. Yeah. Because yeah. if, you, if you allow a fear like that to grow and build in you, that will dominate your life. The doctor, we are not letting him go anywhere. In fact, we might keep you here for three hours. I don't know what you charge per the hour. Um, but we have got a specialist in the house. We are talking about breast cancer awareness and the importance of an early screening and making sure that you do regular checkups yourself. We'll continue this in just a moment. A great conversation, and now it's time to get some great moving. And it's time for you to also prepare to be inspired as we share an extraordinary story of resilience and strength. Now, in today's special feature, we're going to introduce you to a double cancer survivor, Hilary Lum, who has overcome incredible challenges. So join us as we delve into our remarkable journey of triumph. It's one of discovery and getting the secrets to a healthier, happier life. Hilary, how are you doing? <laughs> Thank you for having me on the show. I'm very well, thank you. Incredible what you've gone through. Talk to me about that journey before we even move. What was that like? What did you go through exactly? Thank you. Um, yes, it is a very scary experience being diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, Ten years ago, I went for a routine screening mammogram. Highlighting why screening is so important, yeah? So important. Early detection really saves lives. And um, I was lucky to actually discover it early. I had um, a lumpectomy and um, radiation and a lot of uh, other treatment after that. And then five years after that, it uh, recurred. And then I had a bilateral mastectomy oh. and um, reconstructive surgery after that, and also uh, followed by chemotherapy and other oral uh, medication. Oh. But um, through this journey, I must say, exercise has really helped me. It's helped me stay positive, stay calm, and um, take control of something that I can, take responsibility for my own health. I love that. It's, uh, it, it feels like you've found your power. You've activated that button. You're glowing. You're resonating good energy. And it's incredible, especially after what I've just heard that you've gone through. So I think already an inspiration from Zanzi. And if you guys want to get moving, then now's the time to do it. What excuse do you have? You've been blessed with a beautiful body. You have health and life inside you. And as Hilary mentioned now, this is one of the saving graces for you that helped you get over that hurdle and got your mind right. Yeah? Absolutely, so, absolutely. And while after surgery, um, these are some exercises that you can do. Uh, listeners at home, if you are um, nervous about getting back into an exercise routine, you know, wait for your doctors, go ahead. But then these are some great exercises to stretch out your chest and that. get back into moving your body. So should we do that show from with Mzanzi yes. and see what your new moves are all absolutely. about? <laughs> okay, how do we do this? Okay, well, we're going to start off just by stretching out our hip flexors. Hips. All right. So, um, and we're going to use our foam roller. Okay. Now, you could use at home a cushion or a broom handle, nice. if you like. And we're just going to twist. Oh, okay, lovely. Or so we yeah. definitely got some thoracic twisting going on here. So we're working the One spine. Opening up the chest. Opening up the chest. And now we're going to go up. Ooh, OK, a bit of an down. angle. Let's do three of those. Oh, nice. I can definitely feel it in that sort of chest region. I can definitely feel the pec stretching Thank out. You. And so we're going to switch sides. This, again, for you is based on getting a good posture, right? Exactly. I would imagine. Exactly. You've got to keep your chest open, get your um, posture, your shoulders back, your back straight. 
Well, but I can tell you just for anybody right okay. now, I can feel the rush just coming off me as I do this twist. <laughs> it feels really good because you really try and get your swing on, exactly. get that thoracic uh, sort of spine moving and get okay. warmed up at the same time. Exactly. Nice stuff. Exactly. All right, and we're moving swiftly along. What you got for us next? Moving swiftly along. Don't be afraid to do some chest um, presses. We're okay, going nice. to grab our dumbbells. Yep. And um, lie on our backs for this one. Yeah. We're just going to be doing some gentle chest presses. Nice. So again, I see you focusing on that pec area, focus on like reactivating exactly. the strength that you exactly. might have lost there. But yeah. at the same time, this is great stimulation for anyone looking for, I think, great posture too. This great is definitely going to help. Great posture, opening up. And now, we're going to just do some stretching across. So if you um, take your knees to the one side. Okay, let me go this way. And then your arms, and we're going to stretch across. Open up the whole chest. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. <laughs> Oh, that is a good stretch. A very good stretch to open up the chest. Oh, this is actually perfect for a lot of our viewers. I know some of them <laughs> are still being a little bit naughty lying in bed. So while you're lying in bed, <laughs> why not just adopt this pose and uh, start opening up through these chest openers. It feels incredible. And the other side. And I can imagine not only the hips getting activated, but more the pec region. This is going to allow me to get some good full breaths in the day too, right? Exactly. It helps you to... Breathe, stay calm. It's a wonderful way to just start your day. Oh, yeah. I think I'm definitely starting incorporating into my day before I even get out of bed. <laughs> I'm adding this one to the arsenal because, oh, it feels so good. Literally, like all the rust is just coming off my chest Excellent. every time I open up. <laughs> I'm getting further and further. I can breathe again. Well done. <laughs> I love okay, that. Okay, and now we're going to do, um, we're going to be up. All right, and get up here. So finally we so can get out of bed, Mzanzi, for all of you guys out there, little sneaky ones. Let's get up now. And now we're we going to do some rows. Ooh, nice. And I like the fact that even if you don't have dumbbells, we always mention you can use like exactly. any weighted you bag can, or water bottle or something. A, a tin of beans. Ooh. So this yes. one not working in the chest, this seems to be working in the opposite area. So yes. like the upper back, exactly. shoulder it's blades. Exactly, good to strengthen your back muscles. It helps with your posture. Oh. Lovely stuff. Absolutely loving it, Hilary. And as I can feel right now, just by stimulating the muscles, not only in the chest, but like you just mentioned now, in the posterior chain of the upper back, I can feel my scapula activating. I can really feel exactly. my chest starting to open up. And like, it doesn't even make me want to stand. That tension just kind of like opens up your posture. I feel like a superhero. Thank you. And now we makes can sense. just... Oh, I thought we were going for a high five. It. Like a high five stretch, okay. Okay, I like that. <laughs> Let's do another one of those. Uh, high five stretch. One. Booyah. High five stretch. <laughs> Look, I absolutely love that, Hilary. Thank, thank you, you so much. Literally, you are an inspiration. Thank you for doing what you're doing. I think a lot of Mzanzi that's been watching this now have been seeing that, oh, I've got no excuse, clearly, and that's because of you. So thank you so much. I wish you nothing but the best of luck as you carry on with your journey of health and keep spreading this incredible news. But thank you for coming thank through you. this morning. Thank you for having me on the show. Oh, what an absolute pleasure. Zanzi, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you're out of bed now and you can breathe once again. You can stand with a superhero posture and enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs> Oh, well, listen, still to come on your Feel Good Breakfast show, we're going to redefine beauty with aesthetics medicine. And then Dr. Sizwe Makoba, he is still here. He's not going anywhere as we have more questions to ask and unpack. So stay tuned to your Feel Good Breakfast show.
It's my feel good breakfast show. Thank you so much for rejoining the conversation. You are with your Feel Good Breakfast Show, feeling even better. Why? Because we are honing in on raising awareness for breast cancer this October. We're going to do it every month, but this year there is, or this month, there is a special relevance. And earlier we established what breast cancer actually is and why so few women go for testing. Hopefully we can break that stigma down. Now let's delve into the treatment options for this particular kind of cancer with our surgical specialist, Dr. Cesar Makorba. Doc, thanks so much for hanging around. Thank you so much. I don't know if it's just me being the person that always thinks worst case scenario, but I've been in that position where I always say, oh, if I had to end up in this position, what would I do? Yeah. But I can imagine a lot of women who receive that diagnosis, the first thing you want to know is like, what now? So what? doctor, what is the most common type to weigh? to treat breast cancer? Hey, look, I mean, I think, as I've mentioned before, you know, it's a very scary process. Yeah. That, that's number one. So that's the first thing you try and make your patient or, you know, um, you know, the person you're dealing with at ease. So you have to deal with the family, you have to deal with that person itself, uh, or herself, or himself for that matter. And that's the other important thing, the male side as well, which yeah, we, you know, which we, which, cancer, yeah. yeah, exactly, which we don't touch on too much, actually. It's always, you know, Women's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but for males sure. also get breast cancer. But, uh, you know, the, the treatment is really wide and varied, and we try and tailor it specifically for that particular person, uh, for that particular patient, you know. So, um, you know, in terms of, to answer your question, where to from here, uh, the, the most important thing is knowledge. Knowledge. You, you, yes. you want to know, you know, where the cancer is, which part of the breast, is it just one cancer? Because sometimes you have more than one spot of cancer in the single breast. Sometimes you have more than one cancer in both breasts, you know. So the treatment varies depending on those things. The one thing that I can say with certainty is that whenever someone is diagnosed with breast cancer, there is surgery that's involved. There's no doubt about that because the cancer has to be removed somehow, so, and that's a surgical procedure. And then it just depends then whether that person will get chemotherapy or radiation, you know, to further the treatment. Um, I suppose just like every person's life path is completely different, your system, by the time you get to that point in your life, that gateway, it's going to be completely individual. So I love the fact that we're empowered with so many options. Can we look at receptor-dependent treatments or hormonal treatments? Why is this employed and when is it really successful? So what we do know is that uh, breast cancer is, you know, is a hormonal disease. Okay. Uh, and, we're, we're gonna, and I'm going to focus really on women because that's where it really comes into, even with males, but it does come into that. Is we do know that it, the cancer itself responds to hormones. Okay. So when we're looking at receptor dependent, we're looking at receptors that are uh, you know, specific to the hormones. And specifically, we look at the estrogen okay. and the progesterone receptors. Okay, there are other hormones as well that we sort of look at there that are not so as, as important. So, when we're trying to treat cancer, we try and cover all our bases. The younger you are, we try and hit the cancer really, really hard, such that firstly, we cure it right now, and we make sure it doesn't come back in five to 10 years' time. So that's just one arm of a treatment, you know, for a whole long algorithm of treatments, basically. So hormonal treatment is extremely important for us. Okay. And then, Doctor, when does radiation come into play when it comes to treatment towards breast cancer? Mm. So when we look at breast cancer itself, first we look at the local part, meaning that the breast itself, uh, and I'm just going to sort of digress a little bit. So when cancer has to spread, specifically the breast, it goes first from the breast to the what we call the axilla, which is the armpit. Okay, and the, the lymph nodes. Yeah, that's, that's the glands okay. or the lymph nodes. And then it spreads to the rest of the body. Okay. That's the gateway. So that's yeah. the gateway. Okay. So what we try and do with our treatment is that first we focus on the breast itself by removing the cancer. And then we focus on the armpit by sorting that out. So if there's cancer under the armpit, then the chances of it spreading to the rest of the body is that much higher. Okay. So radiation is just one tool to, to, to treat the local part, okay. which is the breast itself and the armpit, the axilla. Okay, let's deal with the, the, the beast, chemotherapy. Yes. I've, I've had friends go through this process. It is so hectic at times that very often a cancer survivor, if they get cancer a second time, won't go through the treatment because of the loss in quality of life, especially if they feel that their time is, is going to be cut short with the people that they love. What does it do? Because it feels like it's killing the whole body while it's killing the cancer. And sometimes you need to go all in. You need to go aggressive to that degree. But maybe you can explain what it's actually doing to the body and the cancer. I think to understand how chemotherapy works is that it, it's, it, it doesn't discriminate, you know. So even though we're focusing on one particular part of the body, we're giving it through the vein, which sort of goes through the, the whole body, the whole of Everybody, the system. Yeah. Mm. Yes, so that's why it makes you so sick. 
Um, and, and part of that chemotherapy will then go to the targeted area. So we can't say specifically to, to the chemotherapy drug, only focus on the breast and leave the rest of the Not body. Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. <laughs> we, we, we might in the future. Who knows yeah. how things go with AI and all of yeah, those Yeah, I was who, about to say exactly knows. that. Yeah. But, but that's why it basically makes you so sick. Just because it's trying to kill those cancer cells, in the, also in that effect, it also affects the rest of the other cells in the body. Okay. Dr. Sizwe, I know you said that surgery is pr always involved. Mm. Why is it so important for women to have post-surgery options like breast implants or reconstructive surgery? I think, you know, as a woman, you know, the, the breast plays a fundamental role in terms of how you feel as a woman. Yeah. You know, for, for, for a lot of women, you know, without the breast, you know, you, you just don't feel the same. It, nothing is the same anymore. So what we try and do is that we try and say, you know what, we, you've got this breast cancer. There's nothing we could have done about that. However, we can maybe change how you think about yourself in terms of your self-esteem, how the world perceives you by trying to sort of, you know, do implants and all of those things. Aesthetics can play a massive role. I can understand the, the depth of that emotional connection in this case. I really can. It stands as a figurehead and something that you can rally behind as well. So we're going to delve into that right now, in fact. But the doc is not going anywhere. He's going to take us through a practical self-examination, what you need to do, because I think we need to get practical so you can go and do this today, because that is the bottom line. The onus is on you. It's your responsibility to start your own screening, and it's your responsibility to speak up if you feel a lump. But let's delve a little deeper into the aesthetics of this conversation. Oh, absolutely love this conversation, and maybe you'll love the next one. And let's dive into aesthetic medicine, which is rapidly growing. It's a growing field that is constantly introducing new trends and techniques to enhance one's appearance and improve overall well-being. Now, it is also backed by many doctors who are committed to enhancing and restoring natural beauty, but there are also a few misconceptions about it. So this morning, one such professional is Dr. Chelsea, and uh, she's here to demystify this form of beauty as we really look at the standard that we set ourselves. Doc, how are we doing? Good morning. Fabulous. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's an absolute pleasure. I think today is the perfect day to have this conversation. We're serving when it comes to health, and I think this is a big topic that we don't always take into account, but affects us more than we actually are aware of, right? Yeah, 100%. I think in your experience with regards to aesthetic medicine, what role is it defining in the industry today? Are people still interested in, like, how they look and aging? Is it, is it a growing trend, or are people, like, steering away from it now? What are you, what are you noticing on your side? I think uh, with the boom of social media, it's, uh, I think people are looking after themselves a mm. lot more nowadays. Mm. So not only are they, you know, uh, it's more readily available, I think people are, they're wanting to do it. It's, mm. The stigma attached to it is gone. So um, aging is a privilege and we at least have the privilege as well to age gracefully. So I, like I think <laughs> it's, it's yeah. beautiful. No, aesthetic medicine makes me excited. So um, the more people who do it, I think the better. Yeah. Really. And, and also with regards to your experience, what, what is the sort of trend at the moment? Because I look at the past sort of ideas of aesthetics and, and when it came to medicine, and it was these really crazy surgeries, like massive changes that sometimes didn't appear too natural. Has that still maintained its sort of, uh, sort of place in this game? Or have people sort of opted for more sort of natural changes and less invasive surgery maybe? Listen, I think we're always going to have our completely to the right, completely to the yeah, left. Yeah. Um, but I think natural is becoming the, 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 the more trendy thing to do. I mean, I get patients who come in and they go, listen, I, I don't want these big Russian doll lips. <laughs> and I think that's what actually scared people away mm, is they saw mm. the extreme and they never, they're not really seeing the more natural side to things. So it's always nice where you get the patients who come in and go, listen, I want to have stuff done, but I want to leave my friends and family wondering, did I get something done? Ha have I, haven't I? You know, okay. leave a little bit of mystery. Yeah, I don't need a new face when exactly. I read Exactly, 100%. <laughs> no, we don't want, to. no, no, no. And, and, and with all these sort of trends that are currently occurring and social media has such a big influence in how we want to look and uh, this sort of perception of what beauty actually is, what sort of trends are you actually noticing b besides this? I think a lot of people, uh, well, I mean, the one train we're getting that foxy, I think we attribute it to Belly, uh, Belly, Bella Hadid, um, where we've got those little brow lifts. Um, that, I think, is from the one end. We're also getting the sharp jawlines, um, but people are starting much younger. Remember, we wow. lose our collagen from mid to late 20s, so prevention is always better than cure. So anti-wrinkle injections, you know, rather have
have it stop, well, not pre well, prevent it from forming rather than trying to go when it's way too late and then expecting us to perform miracles. <laughs> so with regards to that, I think there's probably a lot of misconceptions around this industry. You mentioned, obviously, people thinking that it's only like the big yes. lips, the Russian style that you can get or whatever your reference was. But what are some of the misconceptions that you could maybe assist a lot of people that are possibly interested in looking at some sort of aesthetic approach to changing their lifestyle? Well, firstly, Aesthetic medicine is not just for females, it's for any gender. I mean, I get males coming in asking for Brotox. Brotox? So, Brotox. Oh, I've never heard of that, okay. Yes. So <laughs> you have the males coming in also wanting, because at the end of the day, you want to look after yourself. So it's for any gender, it's for any person, you know. You're wanting to invest a little bit of self-care, so, you know. You are, at the end of the day, your own investment. Mm. So you want to look after yourself. Um, I think that's one of it. And it also, it really doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg. Um, we can draw up a treatment plan and baby steps, little bit, little bit, little bit. At the end of the day, there's a goal that we want to attain, and if we need to get there a little bit slower, we can. Yeah. So, and it, yes. I, I'm more concerned uh, about this, and I know that there's a lot of association with look good, feel good, yes. right? And a lot of us have these sort of concerns or areas that are really preventing people from like going above and beyond or moving forward. Have you noticed when these changes do occur, when you do a, a complete these sort of surgeries, do you notice a change in people? Do you notice that, are they happier for it? That's important to me. Do you, do you see that happening with your clients? 100%, 100%. And I think COVID did that to us where yeah. we became a little bit of recluses and we hid away. And I think the mask was great where it hid a little bit, but now that we are out in the open, I think it's, it's now our time to shine. So if we are wanting to invest a little bit of money, a little bit of love into ourselves, why not? Because yeah. Technology, aesthetic medicine, we're, we're improving by the day. So come on over. Come get your Botox. <laughs> I love that. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Chelsea Ray, in the building, serving us. And if you want to find out more, maybe reach out to her. You can get her online. It's at aesthetics by underscore Dr. Chelsea. And you can find her online for more information on all of this. And I think, like she says, it's an investment, investment to yourself and your body. There's a lot that uh, is associated with how we look. And uh, maybe Dr. Chelsea is the one that can unlock your beauty and allow you to shine, shine, shine. Let's keep on shining right now and find out what else we can expect for the rest of the show. Thank you so much, Doc. Thank you. <laughs> now, somehow I think that conversation was more geared towards me than you, Raul, but thanks for taking one for the team there, boy. Absolutely love that. Well, if you want to just make a little step in terms of improving your mood and getting that brand new look, it might start with a gorgeous outfit. It's your last chance to help Zoe choose her dress for the day. Option one, beautiful, colorful, sleeveless dress. Got a puff sleeve on option two, both beautiful colors. I think Zoe will look gorgeous in anything, but you get to decide. Let us know on our socials. Then, of course, we've got the wonderful Dr. McCorber here in studio to take us through self-examination tips. How do you get practical with a breast self-examination? We are talking about breast cancer awareness for the whole of October, but we should be talking about it every single day. Today is your day to do a self-examination, do your own screening, and speak to a doctor if you find a lump. We'll take you through exactly how to go through that practical process after this. To the brave hearts who persevere against all odds, we salute you. Along with Adcock Ingram OTC, sponsors of Brave, we're inspiring hope across South Africa this Hopetober. Stand a chance to win 1,500 Rand cash every weekday by answering the weekly Hopetober competition question on Expresso's Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram pages throughout the month of October using hashtag Hopetober and hashtag sponsors of Brave. T's and C's can be found on Expresso. Show.com.
Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso on S3. October, it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we've been learning about our own risk factors, its symptoms, and the various forms of treatment that's available. Now, to keep up to date with our own health, and we want to recognize when we should urgently consult a doctor, we've got a surgical specialist, Dr. Siwe Makoba, who is here to demonstrate how to do a self-breast examination on your own breasts at home. I think, you know, it's so easy to talk. We see, the, we see the diagrams on how to do it, but every now and then we just need to visually get an idea of how to do a self-examination. And let's get practical because this is a practical, relatively simple test that a woman and a man can do at home themselves right now. So where does it begin? Yeah, so the f two things that I wanna, I wanna say first before we start with the exam. Number one, there's, there's, there's a certain, you know, um, period in the month where women should not be doing the examination just because the, the breast changes a lot. The body is so, going to go through changes. Yeah, so during regardless. the monthly cycle, it's not really a great idea to sort of to, to do How that. How long before and after and uh, what is that window? I think most women will sort of know their bodies very well. So they will know when the breasts are changing and they know when the breasts are going back to normal. Mm. So when sort of becoming more of your normal type of sure. breast, then that's the, the perfect opportunity to, to do the breast exam. Okay. And then the second thing that I want to say as well is that I think one must always be practical about these things. The yeah, easiest yeah, yeah. place to do it is probably the shower. Yeah. You're really sort of there, really about to do, you know, what needs to be done. So that's the easiest place. So that's what I always advocate as, as opposed to trying to find a space or a time to try and do it. That's how you forget about it. Just, so those just make it as simple and accessible as possible. I love that. Okay. So we've got a breast. Okay, so the easiest thing to do is basically try and do it in two positions. Okay. You want to do it standing up or sitting up upright. Okay. And you also straight want back, cool. yeah, straight back or and you also want to do it lying down. The reason why you do it like that is because the breast obviously the position changes. The tissue's and, gonna sit differently. And it, it sort sure. of moves in, in different planes. So a, a lump that might not be uh, you might not feel when you're sitting up, okay. you might feel when you're lying down, okay. and vice versa. Okay? And That's really interesting, mm -hmm. because we've never actually touched on that before. So yeah. do the test lying down, do the test standing up. Okay? Yes, and that's pretty much the, the most important thing. Okay? And then if, you look, if you, we look at this part of, of, uh, of our breast, that's probably the central part of, of the breast, which what we call the, the areola complex. Um, you want to, we divide the breast into four quadrants. So in a line going this way, and a line going across. So you've got a quadrant here, a quadrant on this side, a quadrant at the bottom, and a quadrant there. Sure. Just makes things easy for you as well. And when you're going to see your, your medical practitioner, you'll be able to say, I felt this lump on the right lower quadrant or on the, on the right upper quadrant. Okay, so that's what you do. And then you want to really feel using the, just the palm of your hands. Palm, okay. palm of the hands, a li li little bit of the fingers, and just gently just touch and feel. And you want to use what we call a bi-manual technique. And so you want to sort of hold the breast on the one, with the one side, okay. with the one hand. By manual, by manual hands. on this side. Okay. So I'm going to sort of hold it next to my body, and then just like this, and then you, you're touching and you're feeling. Okay. You'll be able to feel more slumps in that manner, yeah, something like that. Like this. And the most important thing that people always forget is the central part of the breast. So you might not, if a lump is sitting directly behind that nipple the areola complex, complex. Okay. you will not feel it if you're sort of just doing this and that. And this. So you just have to feel centrally as well. The other important thing that you will see or you might notice with changes is that if there is a lump directly behind the nipple areola complex, that complex changes, meaning that the way it looks changes. It might be withdrawn in or the, the direction where it normally faces will change. change so, if it, okay. if it, so if, for instance, if it normally faces upwards, then it will maybe face downwards or it might be more drawn in. So it's a very simple way of doing it. But the take home message is basically using the palm and the fingers just to touch all the quadrants on this side in a bi-manual technique. And that's pretty much that. Um, I love that. It's simple, it's practical. Um, thank you so much. Thank you again thank you. for doing what you do every day. I can see how emotionally connected you are to this okay. process, which is amazing. And you've given us some incredible, empowering facts today. If I can maybe end off with just what you would traditionally say to a patient when this moment arrives. What's the first thing you go to? Because you know you're gonna start a long journey with this patient. However that is gonna turn out, you've still got one goal in mind when it starts. How do you start that journey with your patients? What do you tell the, the people who come through your doors in this space? I think patients and, and people always want support. So that's, the thing that, that's what I try and impart to my patients always. So I always say to them, you know, this is gonna be a long journey. 
okay? But that journey, we're going to walk together. And I'm going to be there with you throughout that step of the journey. And that's pretty much, you know, that, that, that's, that's what I say to my patients. And it always makes things a little bit better. It never takes away, you know, the, that, that, just that feeling of, you know, of now I've got this cancer, what next? But it always makes just that bit better. And that's the bottom line. <clears throat> if you're sitting with the fear, you're alone. You're alone with your fear. The second you exam, the second you find that lump and you connect with your doctor, you're not alone anymore. You walk this journey with an incredible pool of um, unbelievable doctors, surgeons, people working in the space that are literally applying out their purpose which is centered on you. So take the first step, take that responsibility onto your own shoulders. We've had those tips for the self-examination. Go and do it today. Uh, so grateful for that conversation and an incredible reminder. For now though, it's time to salute the remarkable individuals leading the charge in healthcare. And that's our pharmacist. And it's proudly brought to you by Adcog Ingram OTC, sponsors of Brave. So this week, let's take a look at the pharmacy of the week and that's the local choice pharmacy out at Rock College Honeydew in Rodeput. Let's have a look. Our pharmacies are on the front line of healthcare. This is Pharmacy of the Week. As a community pharmacist, it's not only just an occupation, it is truly a calling to wake up every morning, put on your brave face after a long shift, your uniform, because you know your patient is waiting for you. They need you to listen, to understand, and to assist them to the best of your ability. Our pharmacy and especially clinic serves a very tight-knit community. And if our patients walks into the door, we just don't know your name. We know your whole entire pedigree, your family, extended family, and that is what makes everything worth it. In our current economy, our pharmacy and especially our clinic plays a very big role in offering healthcare services at an affordable price so that we are sure we don't leave anyone behind. All our pharmacy staff members are brave because to be honest, we have to be. We have to be brave for our patients that cannot. And if I was a patient and feeling ill, I don't just need somebody to dispense medication. I need somebody to explain what's happening to me and have empathy for what I am going through and just tell me it's going to be okay. Pharmacy of the Week, proudly brought to you by Adcock Ingram, OTC, sponsors of Brave. Inspiring communities, one pharmacy at a time. We've been long in the game. Healing South Africa, one allergy at a time. All the sneezing, runny nose, itching of nose and throat, we've left no stone unturned. Until finally, South Africa recognized us. You've given us the courage to continue to do what we do best. Live, work, play, sleep allergy-free with Allergex Non-Drowsy. Ask your pharmacist for the full allergy range. Brought to you by Adcock Ingram OTC, sponsors of Brave. Oh, that is honestly just so wholesome. So we're going to be definitely thanking all the pharmacists who are making a difference in their communities. And all I can say is that on behalf of Expresso and I think Mzanzi, we appreciate you. And we appreciate everything else coming up on the show this morning. Of course, there's a lot to still look forward to. We asked you to vote on that winning dress for Zoe, and it's time to reveal the winner. And on top of that, we've got a great way to discuss how you can assist and donate for cancer. And that's by donating your hair. Mm, interesting stuff indeed. All that and a whole lot more on your Feel Good Breakfast show in just a bit. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, you beauties. You have an important role to play a little bit earlier. Zozo asked for your help choosing her exquisite dress today, and she had two beautiful options. We got the sleeveless, uh, kind of maxi dress, tiered effect, a beautiful color scheme, and then we've got our puff sleeves over here, two beautiful colors, and of course, uh, sourced, uh, well, uh, crafted out of responsibly sourced cotton as well. So let's find out what y'all are saying this morning. Shirley Wagner saying, good morning, espresso, option two. Uh, Hayley Wood saying, option two will look fantastic on you. Great uh, options so far. Rukshana saying option two. Ava Mabuya saying puff sleeve midi dress. I think we've seen Zoe in, in a puff sleeve before, and it is kind of her vibe. Nokutula saying option two will definitely look good on Zoe. Wow, I didn't expect it to be this one-sided. Maureen also weighing in. Zoe would look beautiful in option two. Hashtag styled by Woolies. Well, let's see what she does look like. Hashtag styled by Woolies. Option She's in the puff sleeve. One. Very cute. Oh, that's it nice. is a very cute puff sleeve. I love the color, and it's also got the cutest little like cutout oh, that is the very side. cute. The cinch yeah. on, the, on the waist, great, because it gives very you a cool. fantastic silhouette. That's lovely. Thank you. And we paired her with these cute little sandals from Woolies, nice. so you really can get the whole summer look. Yeah. Well, look we're getting feel. the summer temperature. You know, uh, yes. a spare thought for those that are having the heavy rain at the moment, but we're going to get some temperatures today. That is absolutely exquisite. Well done. Your choice is spot on. As anticipated, so looks amazing. And you can shop this look and a whole range to get you ready for summer, for the new season, because it is upon us. Go and hit the closest Woolies that you can, or you can shop in-store, online, or using their incredible app where they give you some great fashion inspiration as well. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Lady, ladies are the boss. Night time to shine, no time to get lost. Well, it's perfect timing. It's just gone on, well, just about to go on the hour, and it's time for official duty. So let's dive into some national news headlines first. Now, Gauteng police have rearrested another bogus doctor following a tip off yesterday morning. Now, Kingsley Chele allegedly targeted women, misrepresenting himself as a doctor on Facebook and scamming them of cash. Now, the accused was arrested in October after two cases of fraud were registered in Sunnyside and Klipgat. Now, we later escaped from custody, but Gauteng police spokesperson Mavela Masondo says the accused will appear in the Pretoria Magistrate's Court tomorrow. Now, last week, a person going by the name of Dr. Matthew Lani was also exposed for being a bogus doctor. Well, carrying on with national headlines right now, President Saul Ramaphosa says green hydrogen has the potential to significantly grow the country's economy and create thousands of jobs. Now, Ramaphosa delivered the keynote address at the second Green Hydrogen Summit in Cape Town, which aims to create awareness, form partnerships, and source funding to use green hydrogen. Now, its production involves using solar power to split water into oxygen and hydrogen. Now, green hydrogen can then be used in energy-intensive industries such as iron smelting. Now, the Eastern, Northern, and Western Cape have signed an MOU to collaborate in developing green hydrogen. Well, from our national news headlines, let's head over to international news. And the militant group Hamas has denied reports that a ceasefire has been agreed on to allow the Rafah border post between Gaza and Egypt to be reopened. Now, earlier, thousands of people had gathered near the border post hoping to leave Gaza before Israel's expected ground offensive begins. Now, meanwhile, the Israeli army says Hamas is holding some 199 hostages in Gaza, including at least 13 children eight people over the age of 60, and two over the age of 80. Now, America, Britain, Thailand, France, Germany, and Mexico have confirmed that some of their citizens are being held hostage. Well, carrying on with international headlines right now, the Serengeti National Park in Tanzania has for the fifth time in a row been chosen as the best on the African continent by World Travel Awards, a global body that aims to reward excellence in travel and tourism. Now, the Serengeti, popular for its huge wildebeest migration, has bagged the award every year since 2019. Now, other African contenders include Botswana's Central Kalahari Game Reserve, Namibia's Etosha National Park, Uganda's Kidepo Valley National Park, and SA's Kruger National Park, as well as Kenya's Masai Mara National Reserve. 
Well, finally, in our news headlines right now, the Mpumalanga International Film Festival held at the Mbombela Civic Center was a huge success. Now, the aim of this first-of-its-kind event in the province was to get young, aspiring filmmakers in the province interested in making short films. Now, the week-long festival included screening and sessions with filmmakers, and festival CEO Sifiso Nobela says they are committed to provide a platform where content creators in the province will be able to showcase their work. Now, festivals such as these will indeed open more doors for young filmmakers to accuse, or to access opportunities in the future. Uh, we're definitely celebrating that right now. And let's hope we can celebrate the rest of the headlines when it comes to sport. And here's G-Man with the latest. Thank you so much, Raul. Well, it seems all is returning to normal in the world of rugby. Let's get the tail of the tape. So Ireland's 15-month uh, Ireland's dominance in world rugby rankings has been toppled following their defeat, of course, to New Zealand. The Springboks have now ascended to the top spot, courtesy of that thrilling 29-28 win over World Cup host France, probably the game of the tournament so far. This marks South Africa's debut at the number one position since Ireland's reign began. The All Blacks, they are back into second spot, with Ireland now in third. France dropping to fourth. England moving to fifth after their 30-24 victory over a very spirited Fiji. Probably the stars of the World Cup for me so far. And then Argentina's 29-17 win over Wales. They've propelled them to seventh place, leapfrogging Wales now in eighth. And Australia, they maintain their position in ninth. And then Fiji, they are in tenth. That makes sense to us. Now let's turn to the other World Cup and in a thrilling match at the, T, at the T 2023 Cricket World Cup, Australia have finally come good and it was very much leg spinner Adam Zampa who was the star taking four wickets for just 47 runs. So Mitchell Marsh and Josh Inglis, uh, they shone with their 50s as Australia secured their first victory of the tournament, defeating a hapless Sri Lanka by five wickets. So Australia successfully chasing down Sri Lanka's total of 209 in just 35.2 overs at a very windy Akrana Stadium. So despite losing early wickets, Marsh's half-century and partnerships with Manus Labuschain and Inglis, they were crucial. And Glenn Maxwell's quick by a 31 and Marcus Stonis's 20, sealing that victory for the Aussies. And the win now leaves Sri Lanka with three consecutive losses in the tournament. Now let's stay on the cricketing tip and bring some great news for all sports lovers. T20 cricket recently showcased, of course, at the Commonwealth Games and the Asian Games has now officially secured a spot at the 2028 Los Angeles Olympics. So the LA Local Organizing Committee's proposal gained unanimous approval from the International Olympic Committee members in Mumbai. And this decision incorporates a bundle of five fresh sports comprising men's and women's T20 cricket, baseball, and softball, flag football, lacrosse, and squash. And the IOC the executive board had earlier endorsed the package over the weekend and the IOC's final vote on Monday, unanimous, unanimously welcoming these additions. I would say after that, just beware of America now in all of our traditional sports. They're going to have some Olympic funding going into their sporting structures. Now let's turn to football and a fairy tale story. Veteran Banyana Banyana player Janine van Beek is set to feature in the team's lineup for the upcoming 2024 Cap Women's Olympic qualifiers against the Democratic Republic of Congo. So coach Desiree Ellis will finalize that squad soon and these matches will serve as a farewell, a very emotional farewell to van Beek, uh, van Beek rather concluding her illustrious career. So with 183 international caps. Van Beek is on the verge of becoming the most capped player on the continent if she plays in both matches, so I'm sure she will. The first leg takes place on the 25th of this month in the Democratic Republic of Congo, and that'll be followed by a home match in South Africa that I'm sure will be sold out. Janine, we love you. We cannot wait to see you back out there. Uh, but right now, we've got to get back out onto the roads. Let's take a look at the traffic. Well, let's take a first look at your traffic in Athlone, Cape Town. There's some congestion on the N2 inbound. It's on that ramp to Jake's Gadwal Drive. Expect delays. And if you're in Durban, there's heavy rain across parts of Etequini region. Please drive with caution and remember to maintain a safe following distance and switch on those headlights. That's your traffic. Let's take another look at your weather. And disaster management teams across KwaZulu-Natal have been put on high alert as heavy rains are expected to continue lashing the province. 
An orange level six warning has been issued for disruptive rain leading to flooding of roads and settlements, damage to property as well as major disruption of traffic flow along the coast and interior of King Ksetswayo and Ukanya Kuda districts of KwaZulu-Natal. A yellow level two warning has also been issued for disruptive rain in places over the Ugu district, the Durban metro, the eastern parts of Umgunguntlovu Ilembe district, the western parts of King Setchwayo and eastern parts of Zululand district, as well as the Umboti local municipality. And the western and central interiors of Limpopo has received a yellow level two warning for severe thunderstorms, damaging winds, large amounts of small hail and heavy downpours. On that note, let's look at your temperatures for today. There we go, Worcester and Uppington enjoy temperatures today over 30 degrees Celsius. Well, now we turn our attention to your sunrise views and we want to know, does it encapsulate the beauty of nature? Does it put a spring in your step? Well, you stand a chance to win by sending in your sunrise photo from this morning and the best photo wins and will be shown live on air. Remember to include a short weather report, perhaps a story or even a voice note of your part of town. And to enter to win that 100 bucks, you can WhatsApp us on 063 Four zero eight double eight six three. Our winner for today is Michaela from Cape Town, and this is what she had to say. The reason I'm sending these pictures to you today is because whenever I look at the sunrise or sunset, I see the pretty colors, and it reminds me of my granny, and that she's always looking down on me. That is absolutely beautiful. Well, Michaela, you are our winner for this morning. Congratulations, and continue to share your WhatsApp. In fact, your sunrise views to us via WhatsApp. Absolutely love those sunrise views and there's so much to look forward to on your feel-good breakfast show right now. We're going to be diving into a conversation on donating your hair in support of cancer. Yes, it's going to be emotional but so pertinent. And then of course, you see say Africa, the choir is here, the light of Africa. And here's something that you can look forward to in just a bit. <laughs> Check this. With a MyGold's premium account, you get 12 free airport lounge visits. 12? Yeah. Good David, when are you busy planning your next getaway during office hours? Ha, uh, Aman.
Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso on S3. Now, we've been focusing on breast cancer awareness on our Health Tuesday today. And during chemotherapy, thousands of women will deal with many emotional aspects of cancer and losing hair can be especially hard. Cancer service specialist Dorothy Deploy alongside retired nurse Ursula Lakay, they join us this morning to discuss how they are supporting our cancer survivors with donated hair. Ladies, it's so great to have you both here. Thank, Thank you for the morning. invitation. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Let's dive straight into it, Dorothy. I'm going to ask you this initiative. It's important, right? Why is it so important? And what does it mean for cancer survivors? You know, uh, uh, your hair is very much part of you. Yeah. And for a woman, it's part of her family femininity mm. and losing that is grieving because you're losing something that's important to you and so when the doctors tell the woman that you're going to be losing your hair due to chemotherapy it doesn't really hit home until they sit in the shower in the bath and they have the hair coming out in clumps and then it's like it's such an emotional thing mm. and many women are not ready to deal with the bald head and so they would like something to cover the hair while the hair is growing back. And so that's where the wigs come in. We annually run our shave where we ask for donations of hair. And then after the shave we also get donations of hair. Oh, that's amazing. So, and that, in that way, we are able to deal with that aspect of a woman's beauty and uh, femininity to say there is an option for you. And kind of give them their power while they go yes. through this really yes. disempowering yes. journey that Give them something so to hold yeah. on to. Yeah. I love that. And, and I mean, if you think about it, you have a bad hair day, you feel like the whole day is just not going according yes. to plan. Now, Ursula, I know that what's quite special is you, is it your daughter? My and granddaughter. And your granddaughter. You, and my daughter-in-law. You recently all sh cut and shaved your hair for, for cancer. Why, why did you do that? My granddaughter's hair grew very long and she wanted to cut it for summer. So I said, well, usually October, I participate in cancer awareness campaigns. Let's do it for cancer. Her grandfather died recently of um, brain and lung cancer. And my daughter-in-law, Shannon, she lost her mom when she was two years old to breast cancer. And then recently, her dad also died of cancer. So, and also my, one of my best friends was diagnosed with breast cancer in June of this year. Sure. So she's currently undergoing chemotherapy. So in support of them and in memory of our loved ones who passed away to cancer, we thought, and it was also um, a, a girls um, event. So the three of us decided we're gonna grow our hair for October and cut it and go to our hairdresser and discuss it with her and we will package it and take it to cancer in Athlone, which we then did the beginning of this month. Oh, that's amazing. Oh. What was the, the sort of feeling like? I mean, it's quite a difficult thing to let go of your hair. Like Dorothy just mentioned, we are so attached to it. I think males yes. and females, and there's that femininity attached. So was it fulfilling? going through that very daunting process of cutting your hair off, and for your daughter-in-laws as well, to, to, to give that hair up, did, was it a fulfilling feeling? Did it, did it kind of make them a little bit happier at least? I asked my granddaughter, Cassidy, mm. what was it like for you? She said, Ma, I simply love doing it because one of the children maybe can use it, and Shannon as well, very oh. excited about doing it. My family couldn't believe I was going to cut my hair off, because I've been growing it long. I used to wear this style earlier when I was much younger. <laughs> but I retired this year and I said, look, I need a new look. So I might just as well cut it all off. And you could in the same ever. time, support my friends. Oh, oh, I love that. How long was your hair? My hair was about just below my shoulders. Wow. My granddaughter's was down here. And my, my um, daughter-in-law's was... Um, but much longer than mine. Sure. So my wow. granddaughter's was very long. That's oh. incredible. Well, you know what, we, I know we're running out of time, but Dorothy, just quickly, when, you know, when a woman or any person gets that diagnosis and they hear the words, you have cancer, I think we freak out and we, we don't know where to go. 
when they reach out to cancer, what, what happens? What, how do you guys support? Yeah, they, we would get a call or we get an email um, and we would make an appointment and have the, the patient, uh, the woman come in and then we would talk her through the process and um, do the fitting let her choose the color and the style she would want and whether she would want synthetic hair or human hair because we have a week maker up in Johannesburg, timeless weeks, and they ha make it by hand. Sure. Oh, wow. they, they do it mm. strand by strand by strand to make the week. And so the woman can choose what she would want and then she's fitted with the week which she can wear for as long as she wants to. Oh. Absolutely incredible. Well, ladies, Dorothy Ursula, thank you so much for coming through, for sharing this conversation and an incredible work that your entire family are doing in this uh, sort of chapter. I wish you nothing but the best success. And I think you are definitely a sounding board of comfort for many women that are struggling with this issue right now and going through this overwhelming concept. So I think for you, Mzanzi, a great opportunity, seeing that it is October, to get involved. Go to cancer.org.za and you can find more information on how you can donate, how you can support, and just create an incredible community for those that are desperately needing that support right now. Ursula Dorothy, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, an incredible panel, and we're going to continue. <clears throat> excuse me, raising awareness around breast cancer and what you need to do to get practical, to be empowered. We did put it to you this morning, a particular question. We wanted to find out if someone close to you has been diagnosed with breast cancer and that connection, we've spoken about the genetic connection, that one degree of separation, but it also speaks to the emotional support and the power of this journey. So we've had a comment come through from Galen Holster who said, my aunt was diagnosed, but she had such an amazing support structure. She also lost one breast. She sadly passed away, but not because of her cancer, because of thrombosis. Moral of the story is my aunt was such a strong woman no matter what she faced. She never showed pain on her face, never downcast, but content in her heart and her being fighting till the bitter end. May she rest in perfect peace. I absolutely love that. The legacy that she has left behind because of that fighting spirit. I can see how much it's inspired you, Galen, and that inspires us this morning. Thank you for joining the conversation and showing that vulnerability. And we are so sorry for your personal loss. That speaks to the loss of so many people and reinforces the need for early detection. And in just a moment, um, after the break, we're gonna introduce you to a product, a sports bra that can aid with early detection in a very powerful way. And then I've got, we, of course, we've got the Isibani Sa Africa Choir in studio ready to perform. They are phenomenal. The voices are magical. If you want an emotional undercurrent for today's show, they have nailed it. Stick around. Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show, and it's been a busy Tuesday one as we put the spotlight on health. Now, breast cancer is the most common cancer in the world, with 1 in 26 women in South Africa being diagnosed with it in their lifetime. 
That means early detection is your best chance of survival. This morning, we are connecting with Debbie Gebhardt, CEO of Check No Prevent, a nonprofit organization whose objective is to communicate that early detection saves lives through their unique sports bra. Good morning, Debbie. You're looking lovely in pink. <laughs> Good morning, Zoe. As are you today? Thank you. We are matchy-matchy, but you know what? It's all for breast cancer awareness since we are celebrating that this October. I love what you have done. You have created a sports bra that helps with breast cancer detection. Can you talk us through this? Sure. I think the first thing I just want to um, point out, which is a very scary thing, is that you mentioned that one in 26 women in South Africa will face breast cancer in their lifetime. That statistic actually dates back to 2014. That is the last time research was done in this country. And globally, that number is closer to one in eight. So we think that number is actually far, far higher in South Africa. So I think that's the first thing that people need to be aware of is that it really is much more prevalent than they possibly think it is and their risk is much higher. So what we realized is that as, although breast cancer is the most commonly occurring cancer in the world, it's also the most easily treatable when detected early. But once a month, once a year going for an, a, a, a mammogram or participating in a self-check in October, it's just not enough. We mm. need women to check regularly. And what better way to remind and educate them than with a bra? So we designed the Check No Prevent Sports Bra. It's not only a very fashionable, beautiful, functional bra, but it also contains on its inner lining, and there you can see one of our examples there, it contains on its inner lining both instructions on how to self-examine your breasts because we found a lot of women really don't know how to do the exam. And then it also gives you some of the warning signs to look out for. So this is a wonderful tool to remind you every time you wear your sports bra and take it off at the end of the day to get into the shower, which is an ideal time to do your check, it's the perfect reminder to do that check. Oh, Debbie, this is incredible. I mean, I've got it here. I've, I've, I've put it inside out to just show the camera how the checkpoints are, as well as where to know. You've even got a diagram here. Debbie, what drew you to this cause? What, what, what inspired you to, to create a sports bra with, with everything you need on it? Well, I, I have to give credit to my co-founder, Jenny de Oliveira, um, who actually had this idea and, and brought it to life through sheer will and force of passion. And um, Jenny brought me on board because she knew that I have a very deep connection and concern for women's health. And um, it was just an absolute natural fit for me to join her in bringing this bra to market. Um, I think very important to me was that it not only be uh, a bra that tells a message, but also a bra that serves a purpose. Mm. People are not going to buy a bra simply because it conveys information. That bra needs to work. And so we pride ourselves on the fact that that bra competes very strongly with any branded athletic sports bra on the market in terms of support, um, comfort, quality of construction, and also design. Yes, I mean, for me, it's all about having the right support when doing a high intensity workout. Now, I've got one of the bras here in front of me. In fact, we've got a couple of the colors here. How does the sizing work? It's pretty much a standard sizing. We go from small all the way up to 4XL. So we even custom make for larger ladies because we realize a sports bra is actually an essential in anybody's closet. And, um, and what's really great as well is that it can even be worn as a tank top when you work out at the gym. So um, when you go online to checknoprevent.shop and you order your bra, you can quite comfortably, if you know you are a small, you can quite comfortably order a small and know that it will be the right size for you. Oh. Perfect. Well, listen, I will definitely be heading online to purchase mine. Debbie, thank you so much. And congratulations to you and your business partner on really bringing this incredible sports bra to our attention. And thank you so much for joining us. And let's let the fear of cancer, you know, by using the resources at our fingertips. So you can visit Check 
nprevent.com for more information on these incredible sports bras that they have available. And as you can see on the inside, it has everything you need to know, even how to do your check. A little reminder that this is something we as people need to do as often as possible because early detection is what's going to save lives. Oh, yes, it's that time of the hour, Zanzi, and I know you're going to be moved by this. I'm here with Isibani, South Africa, the light of Africa, a choir that is doing absolute magic right now, and what a perfect time to be uplifted by them. So uh, let's talk about them, the Isibani, South Africa choir. They are all the way from Ikayalicha. They are the light, uh, a choir for change with voices that will lift your soul, like I've just said so. So I think it's uh, fitting that we give them a big feel-good welcome. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm here with uh, Anisiwe. Obviously, you've been a part of this choir. You guys are doing incredible things. But talk to me about what this means. What does the choir mean and the formation of it? When did it occur? The, thank you so much. Uh, the choir, now it's 20 years in the industry. Oh, wow. Uh, it was started by myself in 2003. And back then, I was just opening my mom's garage, finding something to do after school. But as time goes on, it built to what it is now, like a cultural group, an arts and culture place, because we have our own center oh, where wow. we rehearse and also tourists are coming uh, to, to get our performances. Ismanis Africa is the light from Kailicha. Everyone knows Kailicha, that place of drugs and charm and all that. But there is Ismanis Africa there who's lighting that big light for the whole world. Mm. And... Um, we are a choir for change, not only because of our music and our dance, but with other projects that we do in our township, like Soup Kitchen, okay. and an afternoon school program that we do with kids. Uh, we are the change. You are the change, and you're so involved in your community. I think a lot of us have maybe even seen you at the waterfront. Yes. That's where you're performing and sharing your magic. And I'm looking around, I'm seeing beautiful faces, Thank real, raw, authentic people sharing their passion, sharing God's gift that they've been blessed with. So thank you for doing that, firstly. Let's talk about something even more exciting, the fact that you got a new album out, Sawubona, I believe is the name of it. Talk to me about this body of work, how this came together and what it's representing. Oh my God, it's a blessing. Sawubona, it's our album, and I have 12 tracks on it. It's just a blessing of album. Like, you can get whatever that you can find in Africa, in South Africa. You will get a gospel song. You will get a traditional song. You will get Iguijo, like Atandwe, the song that we're doing with yeah, Bravo. Yeah. You, you will just feel at home when you listen to our album because it's all about we try to find our identity and our country's identity Oof. with our music we want everyone to connect not only the youth not only that but everyone to feel involved because i think to make a change in our communities we must all work together our album is about that it's oh. about unity you I will love see Sawbona when we are greeting in different languages. The next song you will hear at Tandre, but you will see a gospel song. On, on our, that's, that's how we are. We are a poikikos. <laughs> <laughs> Poiki. So that because Poiki that we absolutely love. Now, I know you've got a new song. Well, not, new songs coming out, of course. We'll dive into that in a bit, but uh, this one is taking it back. This is so fitting for what hap is happening today. Just to lift our spirits, I believe it's titled Nombela. Yes. Nompela, well. Nompela. Oh, ah. well, the stage Masa. is yours. Masa. It's about a quiet. Take Masa. it away Masa. and enjoy, Mzanzi.
Bespoke. Welcome back as we take another medical turn and with every new season comes seasonal hay fever. It seems to have hit hard this year, causing headaches, sinus pain and a whole myriad of other lovely problems that come with it. And it can provide our family with relief. Um, if we can find that one thing, we will definitely rely on it. And pediatrician and allergologist Professor Claudia Gray now joins us to discuss pain and fever prevalent during the change of season. Prof, thank you so much for joining us. Thank um, you. It seems like maybe an unreasonably high incidence of sinus issues at the moment. We've had such a hectic change of season. What is actually going on when we talk about sinusitis and why mm. it can affect us so hectically? What is actually happening within our system? Yeah, so the first thing to say is that the term sinus is thrown around quite loosely. Yeah. And people use it for anything involving their noses and their paranasal sinuses. But sinus can incorporate lots of different conditions. So it could be infective. The change of season brings a whole new bunch of viruses All and we can get colds and, yeah. and flus or even a proper sinus infection. But sinus is also thrown around loosely for allergic rhinitis, which is allergies in the nose, which can also make you feel congested and itchy and sneezy and, and heavy pressured sinuses. And, and can be quite debilitating. We know there's a lot of like nerve connections. There's a lot going on in the face in this area. So when, when you get hit, it can be really, really kind of all encompassing. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about sinus headaches and sinus pressure, what's the difference there? What's happening within the body? Well, I don't think there's a huge difference. I think you're just describing some of the symptoms. So once again, it depends on the cause of the sinus. If it's allergies, often you have a clear runny nose, itching, sneezing, congestion or blockage of the nose, as well as a runny nose, which is usually clear. But if you have an infection, you often feel unwell and lethargic and have a bit of a fever and a sore throat, plus the sinus pain and pressure. But generally what you're describing is the feeling that the nose is blocked, you can't breathe properly, oh. there's pressure next to the nose in the paranasal sinuses. And by the way, these frontal sinuses only develop at about the age of 10 years, so we oh, don't really wow. get that in children. But in adults, your sinusitis can also God, extend there. You have that, that pressure mm. up there. So I think more often than not, we can't fight this. It's obviously not a bacterial battle. But we need relief and we need the body yeah. to be strong enough to be able to do that fighting. Paracetamol seems to come into... I've got two young kids, been through the pregnancies with my wife. We lean on paracetamol mm. so much. Why is it so effective in this space specifically? Well, I think, once again, it depends on the cause. Mm. So um, you have to look at the cause of the sinus. And sometimes that means you have to visit a doctor or have allergy tests, etc. If it's allergy, 
allergies, you, you, you're really looking at antihistamines and nasal sprays. If it's infection, you're looking at general symptom relief. As you mentioned, most of these infections are viruses, which aren't a quick cure. They have to ride their course, okay. but you have to dampen down the symptoms. So nose sprays, paracetamol, painkillers. And I prefer really plain pure medications so sure. my patients will know I'm not a big advocate for combination medications because okay. often there's one dose that's incorrect or one ingredient that has many side effects such as drowsiness so it's always benefits have to outweigh the risks and that's why we like to use pure ingredients like pure antihistamines or pure paracetamol to relieve symptoms. Why is the drowsiness such a common factor in that kind of the treatment? Because we often mm. will have a combination of different. I think that's where yeah. paracetamol does come into its own because you can use it with other things. But why is that drowsiness such a common factor in the medications that help in this space? Yeah, I think um, uh, often old-fashioned medications are used, <laughs> and the older the medication, generally the larger is the side effect profile. So we've got many like new... Like shotgun effect. Yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely. So your steroids, your old-fashioned antihistamines, they do have a shotgun effect, and then you get the side effects as well because they act on many different receptors, whereas your purer medications such as new generation antihistamines or paracetamol or ibuprofen, they act purely on certain receptors and don't tend to cause drowsiness. So drowsiness is a problem not only with a disease, because if you're sick, you feel lousy yeah. and drowsy. If you've got allergies, you might not sleep well because your nose has been blocked all night. And then if you take the wrong medication, which causes drowsiness, oh. it's a very it's big a combination. Yeah, it's a completely. double whammy. So. Uh, you must struggle with people diagnosing themselves, but we mm -hmm. do know ourselves and we know what sometimes just feeling a bit better or more empowered kind of helps us even when it comes to taking the medicine. Some people yeah. struggle with pills. Yeah. For me, I feel like an FFS so is going to be more effective because it just goes straight in and it's bubbling and it's doing its thing. <laughs> yeah. um, but effectiveness does stem partially from how we feel and how we think about these things. There is a psychosomatic connection, yeah. but there are other options. You don't just have to take a tablet. Absolutely, and I think in, med in medicine, and you know, I'm coming also from a pediatric perspective, it's all about compliance. It's yes. all about the patient taking That's the That's where medication. the battle is won and lost. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you know with children, I know with children, you can write up a list of medications, but if you don't take it, you ain't going to get Does anywhere. Does it taste like strawberry? So yeah. it's for, absolutely. It's great to have a variety of forms of medications. We're lucky. You know, some medications come in tablets and capsules and effervescents and syrups and even suppositories. So I think also as healthcare providers, we have to look at the practicalities and say, what would you tend to take most or feel most effective with or would comply with the best? And that's for adults and children alike. So it's good to have a variety of things to be familiar with and to have available so that you can choose the right form of medication for the right person. Empowering parents, and it does Absolutely. make all of the difference. If you've had a screaming child in a doctor's room trying to, to work through this, you understand, you get it. Yeah. Prof, thank you so much. I love this notion of knowing the pieces on the board. Keep it simple, understand what's going in, and understand how the body is going to receive it. Having the right medication, and most importantly, the right advice, that person in your corner will help, uh, help you to to feel so much better in a much quicker time frame. That's the bottom line. We just want to start there. So Panado is great for um, fast pain and fever relief when you need it most to help your body do the fighting that it needs to do. Panado Pediatric Syrup 5ml sachets. They're really convenient to pack and easy to use. So you're always prepared for pain and fever anytime, anywhere. Oh, well, listen, when it comes to fitness, it isn't just about getting ripped. It is a great way to connect with your body, build your self-esteem, your confidence, relieve some stress, and maybe even learn how to control your body like a kung fu master. Yes, you heard that right. Raul recently took a kung fu lesson and discovered that it is a super fun way to stay fit, but also a great way to learn some valuable new skills. Hey, what is up, Zanzi? Now on my continued journey to find fun, unique, and interesting ways to stay fit, I'm gonna be putting my body through something very, very different. So I'm out here at the Chinese Martial Arts and Health Center to do exactly that. Are you ready? Let's go. <laughs> I'm dying to find out more about Kung Fu. I've seen it in the movies, but I'm sure there's a lot more to it than what many of us think. So 
talk to me about this incredible art form. So Chinese martial arts is a, a traditional form of martial arts. Um, I like to think of it as a lifestyle martial art. It encompasses a hard style, which is our traditional Kung Fu. It encompasses an internal art form, which is Tai Chi, young style Tai Chi. And then you have the breathing and internal component, which is called Qigong. So let's just start with how we greet, how we do a Chinese greet. Okay. So it's a very simple thing. It's basically a sun and hand fist like that. The hand is open so that you're not hiding anything. It's nice. Ah, and transparency. And transparency, I like that. open. The left leg's normally forwards. It's a Shaolin greet. It's just a normal way of saying, how's it? That being said of Zanzi, how's it? And let the show begin. <laughs> what are we starting with? Okay, so we're going to start off with our first exercise, which is um, called Hobe in Chinese. And it's basically coming to center, finding your center, reaching up as high as you can, and then driving the arms down at the same time, keeping your rotational twist on your hips at 100%. You can kind of speed it up a little bit, getting that rotation off the hip. Honestly, these warm-up exercises are actually a lot harder than I anticipated. I'm normally great with coordination, but this one caught me out for sure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep practicing this one at home. So this is called Shua Yao, and you're basically doing that. You can lift your heel up, and then make sure your chin's up. Don't look down, keep your body up. Sifu Marco makes the stance look so simple. By just getting into the position, you don't realize how much of your core needs to be engaged, your pelvic girdle, your hips, your legs, literally to the point where you're almost shaking. All my coordination stuff is, yeah, straight line. There's no crossing over. Everything I focus on is efficiency of a linear direction. Yeah, right so there. now you're going cross. Now you're working like complete different so, chains. Now it's so different for me. So with Kung Fu, the, the, the difference is if you punch me, and you strike quite hard. I'm not gonna collide with you. So punch hard, punch hard, it's fine. I'm not gonna do this, I won't hurt you. I'm not colliding, right? You punch, you feel the difference. Feel the difference? No, it's not I'm a lot just, of impact. I'm not impacting, I'm just sticking. So if I move, I'll go. So the Matrix stole all this from Kung Fu? Yes. Evading, Pretty much. Movement, dancing, <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna teach you how to um, defend yourself. Okay, so just keeping one hand up that defends your face and the other hand comes down to defend the bottom part of your body, pretty much. Okay, it's like taking a step, taking a step, taking a step. So I think let's go downstairs and let's get you onto a bag a little bit and get you to transfer some power on, on, on something that's physical. What I want you to do is we're gonna block, we're gonna hit. Block, hit. Awesome. I gotta say, as intimidating as the thought is of being trained by a master, it is so encouraging, it's so empowering. Like, he believes in you, and before you even realize it, you start believing in yourself too, and I think that's the beauty of this entire process. So our force comes from here, not from the shoulder or the elbow. Easy. Now, if I just, I don't use that, that kind of force. I just use my body mass. Oh, okay. Different. Power, body movement, get your structure right, get your breathing right, then you have 20, 30% more power. So we're gonna introduce you to our dear little friend. <laughs> punch, go under the arm, block, punch. And then like, just shift your, your body weight into the dummy. Yeah, so you're using your hips. So what that simulates is this. If you're punching me, I'm going block, uh, punch. So I don't want to be in a fist, okay? I want, I want my hand here. Stick, punch, good. Pull back, strike out, good. When you learn this skill, you can transfer it to just a normal walking stick or whatever. Uh, Default is always fighting position, and then we're gonna strike and put all our weight into the, into, into the weapon. And then we're gonna draw back. Remember, we draw back and we draw the elbow in like that, and then we step into our strike. Okay, so hit my stick. 
Ah, you're hitting it underneath. You've got to go over it. There we go. That's it. That's better. This is more than just playing around with sticks. My shoulders are burning, man. There's no workout that ticks so many boxes, and I'm definitely leaving you a little bit more empowered, a little bit more humbled at the same time, and I think definitely hungry for more. Well done for your effort and your training. <laughs> I hope to see you further. But in tradition of our martial arts, you need to do some work at the school. Okay. I... <laughs> Forever the student, I guess. <laughs> fitness off. Fitness on. Fitness off. <laughs> okay. Sifu Moko, how, how long are we doing this for, bro? <laughs> Sifu Moko. Sifu. Are you offering to clean the studio my, for us? My shoulders are still so <laughs> after that. He didn't, he didn't make me stop, but honestly, it Aww. was absolutely incredible. Unlocked so much potential within me. And I think for Mzanzi as well, this is how you really, truly find your power. It was insane. Oh, that looked incredible. <laughs> well, Raul, well done to you. Thank you. That looked amazing. <laughs> and fitness doesn't just have to happen in the mm -hmm. gym. Get out there and get moving. And if you need some cool tech to help you track your fitness goals and motivate you to beat your best, then Vodacom is giving you the chance to enhance your plan so that you can access the latest smartwatches and buds. And the best part, you can even stream music and take calls from your smartwatch with the one number feature. Now to view all of the devices and deals on offer, you can visit voda.com forward slash enhance. Mzansi, enhance what you love, add more of what you need to your contract. Choose from a range of enhanced options in store or online. Further together, Vodacom. Oh, I love it. So we're going to get off to the break. Another performance from Isibani to Africa, an amazing choir just to inspire us. And then this yeah. young gent, Lorenzo ah, Darius, is going to school me on our rugby semi-finalists. Yes, we know the world rankings are back in order. Oh, there Thankfully, you go. the world looks normal <laughs> again. Uh, but now, how much do we know about our rugby World Cup semi-finalists? It's all going down this weekend. He's going to school me in okay. just a moment, probably. <laughs> Yes, Mzansi, welcome back to Feel Good Breakfast Show, and let's elevate the mood right now. Obviously, the World Cup is taking us all by storm, especially after Sunday's game, and I know Ooh. you've been in the loop since the start of the Rugby World Cup, and that's thanks to our proud sponsors, Total Energies. And today is another lesson as you get to know a bit more about the teams that will be competing in the 2023 Rugby World <laughs> Cup semi-finals. Yes. A round of true or false with our special oh, guest, Expresso Sports presenter and producer, Lorenzo Darius in the building, <laughs> and the one and only G-Man. Well, 
Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Don't rub your answers or fault during the game. Okay, okay, I'll try. You know the rules if you don't know, okay? So the game is simple. You're going to get two statements, and you'll have to 10 seconds to guess whether they are true or false. Now, each of you are going to get a chance to display your answer one at a time. So the question is, ladies and gentlemen, are we ready? You got the You got the game? So here's the body, right? So Argentina was the first team to qualify for the 2023 Rugby World Cup semi-finals. True or false that Argentina's best result in Rugby World Cup history is second place in the 2015 tournament. All right, so your answers can go right now. You've got so 10 I, seconds. I, I started Nine, a little bit early. Eight, seven, six, I had to. five. I had to remember. Four. Oh, oh, it yeah, looks like a thumbs up when we beat the back. clock I, this I, time. All right, so let's reveal our answer first. I, let's see the answer. It is false, and let's see what the gents wrote down. Right, Lisa? Oh, 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 we got the two come points on. in the bag. That, that wasn't too difficult. Yeah, I had yeah, more trouble remembering how to spell false. <laughs> <laughs> is it easy? Yes, I got the same thing. <laughs> All right, well done, gentlemen. It looks no, like the well honors done, go eh? to both of you. One point apiece. But well, let's carry on with the game. Right, so, next question. <laughs> New Zealand secured spot number two and are gunning to make history with a fourth World Cup win. And, true or false, the All Blacks are the only team to have two family members to fly the flag high with the likes of the Barrett brothers, Bowden and Geordie Barrett. Is this true or false? All right. So they are the only team to have two family members. Mmm, they're flying the flag high. Uh, this is tricky. Oh. No, I'm going to just... You've got about five seconds left. I'm Four, gonna trust, I'm yeah. gonna trust three, my guts. I'm gonna trust two, my gotcha. one. All right, let's reveal the answer first on the board. <laughs> is it true or false? It is ah! false. Oh! So it looks like there is another pair of brothers flying the flag high. But gentlemen, what were your answers? Oh, oh no! <laughs> Wasn't it with the English brothers? Or I think there are other brothers. Like I can't really point it now. Van Apolo, yeah. Yeah, Tulagi brothers. Yeah, there oh, were quite a few. There might be quite men. a few. Okay, yeah. very nice. So, uh, still yeah, one point. And the fact that there are three <laughs> Barretts there. I mean, the whole Barrett yeah, family, family, family <laughs> at one point could have played. You get a Barrett, you get a Barrett. Everybody gets a Barrett. Everybody gets a Barrett. Five parents, yeah. indeed. All right, we carry on again. Right, so here's a tough one, I think. England toughened it out against yeah. Fiji, and that was to secure the third spot into the semi-finals, all right? So, England have only had one victorious World Cup win, but, true or false, England have played in three other Rugby World Cup finals, other than the 2003 final where they won. Mmm. So that would mean they've yeah. lost two finals yeah. out of three. Oh, man, I should know this. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's very plausible, actually. Yeah, I'm eh? trying to think myself here. All right. We count at the seconds count. We've got another five seconds left. Four, three, I, I don't two, know this one. I'm just going for a shot in the dark, might be stumped. What is the actual answer? I think it's false. Oh, it's true. <laughs> All right. So England definitely did do that. And they appeared in the 91, 2007, and 2019. So you were given yes. because Whoa. you weren't around. And gents, what yes. is the answer? We got a false. <laughs> oh, Jimmy. Oh, oh Jimmy. You see, I can't even remember when, but because my wow. brain is that old, I was there. I was alive. <laughs> yes. I was alive in she 1991. Okay. That's so funny. Playing, is it, playing to his strengths. All right, so now you have got two pain, points in the bag. Dude. Now you You've understand got one final round coming up, Ooh, ladies and gentlemen. Man, uh, Law, your chance to draw this. G-Man can boy. send it yeah. through all the way home. All right, listen up. South Africa are the reigning champions who never back down without a fight, right? We all know this. Now, which is proven in their game against the host nation to secure that final semi-final spot. So, yeah. as they head towards another final, true or false, gentlemen, South Africa are the only rugby team to have won every World Cup final they have played in. Oh, have they won every World Cup final that they've played in? True or false, we've got another five Ooh. seconds left. Four, three, two, one, time's already up. Let's see what the answer is. Is it true or false? It is true. They have definitely done that. Gentlemen, what have you revealed? Yeah, true ding, 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 and ding. true. Oh, what point of peace. It looks like 3-2 in the final round. Looks like we have a ladies... Well, looks like we have a winner, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it is the G-Man. Well done, brother. Well done, son. Oh. Because he was there in 1991. <laughs> now, come on. I, I'd love to know what I was doing in 1991 <laughs> if I was watching rugby, but that's and, where and, and it begins, man. And how were you man. celebrating that? Beautiful. But listen, Mzanzi, that was an awesome well game. Gents, thank you for being a part of that. Lots of fun <laughs> can you had now. And look, the si semi-finals, obviously, on the way. It's around the corner. You need some game day snacks, let me tell you. And it's also uh, important to get some essential braai items, too. Yep. So how do we do this? Just head over 
over to a Total Energy service station. You can top up on fuel, bright charcoal, fire lighters, snacks, and drinks for the big game. The list goes on. And you can earn club points that can be redeemed for cash back. Yeah, so this can be helping you save on those future purchases and setting up an incredible game for the rest of your guests. I know there's big plans happening for this one, gentlemen. Yeah, I don't know yeah. about you guys, but uh, what, are you, what are you doing for the Sims, bro? Uh, I'm actually going to be watching it with some uh, English supporters. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm, gonna, okay. I'm going into the enemy's den now. I'm going to go <laughs> chill with them and just see how everything I'll raise you, but I'm going to be watching it with some English family members, oh, bro. Oh, it's gonna be, my poor son done. is going to oh, be pulled in two <laughs> different directions, and I promised him he can stab for the game. Okay, he's yeah. allowed to because oh, I feel like he goes. missed a milestone in his oh, life yeah, uh, not, not seeing that yeah, yeah. quarterfinal. It was so, so special. But he's got to make a choice. I, I'm starting to be, <laughs> feel my allegiances are being torn. Nah, never. This hey, never, yeah, yeah, yeah. never. Well, looks like the lads <laughs> having fun right here, but we've got to carry on with this. The show and official duties must commence. <laughs> Just like in rugby, it's uniting our energies that helps us move forward. Thank you, gentlemen. It's 8 o'clock. Let's take a final look at your headlines, starting with national news. Johannesburg Water says damage to power lines at Randwater's Sacred Bosch water treatment plant has had an impact on important reservoirs and water towers in Johannesburg. The power lines were damaged by a hailstorm on Saturday night. A spokesperson, Nombusa Shabalala, says there's a decrease in water levels at reservoirs in the Santon system and the Commando system, which supplies water to the Hurst Hill, Cosby and Brixton reservoirs, is also affected. Residents will be informed of the progress in repair work. And staying with our local news, Gauteng police have re-arrested another bogus doctor following a tip-off yesterday morning. Kingsley Kele allegedly targeted women misrepresenting himself as a doctor on Facebook and scamming them out of cash. The accused was arrested in October after two cases of fraud were registered in Sunnyside and Klipgat. He later escaped from custody. Gauteng police spokesperson Mavela Masundo says the accused will appear in Pretoria's magistrate's court tomorrow. Last week, a person going by the name of Dr. Matthew Lani was also exposed for being a bogus doctor. Moving to news abroad, rescue workers are searching for 167 people who are still missing after a boat capsized on Friday on the Congo River in the northwest of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. More than 40 bodies have been recovered and 189 survivors rescued. A civil group involved in the rescue effort says the overloaded boat was carrying more than 300 passengers as well as cargo. The boat also reportedly sailed at night, which is said to be against safety regulations. And the militant group Hamas has denied reports that a ceasefire had been agreed on to allow the Rafah border post between Gaza and Egypt to be reopened. Earlier, thousands of people had gathered near the border post hoping to leave Gaza before Israel's expected ground offensive begins. Meanwhile, the Israeli army says Hamas is holding some 199 hostages in Gaza, including at least 13 children, eight people over the age of 60 and two over 80. America, Britain, Thailand, France, Germany and Mexico have confirmed that some of their citizens are being held hostage. Bringing it back home, South Africans may have an extra day of holiday this year. This as President Cyril Ramaphosa considers declaring a public holiday should the box win the, World Rug the Rugby World Cup final in France on the 28th of October. The president joked that he was still struggling to get hold of his French counterpart, Emmanuel Macron, to commiserate about Sunday night's game, regarded as arguably the best match in the history of rugby and won in magnificent fashion by the Springboks. Ramaphosa congratulated Jacques Nienaber, the box chief head coach in a telephonic call after the match and pledged to be in Paris for the final to watch the box lift the Webb Ellis Trophy for a record fourth time. Well, that's where I leave your morning headlines. Let's take a final look at your sport. All right, let's bring some normalcy back to world rugby rankings. So Ireland's 15-month dominance in world rugby has been toppled. They, of course, after the defeat to New Zealand, they've been knocked off that top spot. The Springboks have now ascended to that 
top number one ranking, courtesy of that thrilling 29-28 win over World Cup hosts France, probably the pick of the games this tournament. And this marks South Africa's debut at the number one position and since Ireland began their reign. The All Blacks, they now occupy second spot with Ireland in third, France dropping down to fourth, and then England moved to fifth after that 30-24 victory over a very spirited Fiji. Then Argentina's 29-17 win over Wales has propelled them to seventh place. Wales now in eighth, and then Australia languishing in ninth, and Fiji stand at tenth, proudly so. Now, on to the other World Cup, and Australia have come good, finally, in a thrilling match at the T20, uh, or the 2023 Cricket World Cup. Leg spinner Adam Zampa was the star, taking four wickets for just 47 runs. And Mitchell Marsh and Josh English shone with the 50s with Baton Anders. Australia secured their first victory of the tournament, defeating Sri Lanka by five wickets. So, Australia successfully chasing down Sri Lanka's total of 209 in just 35.2 overs at the very windy Ikana Stadium. Despite losing early wickets, Marsh's half century and partnerships with Manus Labashain and Inglis were crucial. Then Glenn Maxwell's quick fire 31 and then Marcus Stronis weighing in with 20, seeding that victory for the Aussies. And this win unfortunately leaves Sri Lanka with three consecutive losses in the tournament. Now let's turn to the shorter format, to T20 cricket. And obviously it was recently showcased at the Commonwealth Games and Asian Games, and it has now secured a spot at the 2028 Los Angeles Olympics. The LA locally, a local organizing committee's proposal gained unanimous approval from the International Olympic Committee members in Mumbai. And this decision incorporates a bundle of five fresh sports comprising of men's and women's T20 cricket, baseball and softball, flag football, lacrosse and squash. About time. The IOC executive board had earlier endorsed the package over the weekend and then the IOC's final vote yesterday unanimously welcomed these additions and we certainly echo that call. Now on to a very emotional send-off for one of our greats. Veteran Banyana Banyana player Janine Van Baek is set to feature in the team's lineup for the upcoming 2024 CAF Women's Olympic qualifiers against the Democratic Republic of Congo. So coach Desiree Ellis will finalize that squad soon and these matches will then serve as a farewell officially to Van Baek, concluding her incredible career. Let's get to grips with that. With 183 international caps, Van Beek is on the verge of becoming the most capped player on the continent. That's, of course, if she plays in both matches, so hopefully she will. The first leg takes place on the 25th of October away at the DRC, followed by a home match here in South Africa that I hope is sold out. Janine, we love you. We cannot wait to see you back out there. It's going to be an emotional one. And that's where we leave a very emotional sport to broadcast for today. Um, before we delve into the last hour of the show, let's get you to work safely. Thank you so much, Yiman. Yes, let's dive into our traffic first up. For many of us heading out on the roads this morning, and in the Peter Maritzburg area and KZN to be specific, there's a stationary vehicle on the N3 northbound, and that's at Camperdown Interchange. The left lane is currently obstructed, so please, if you're on the area, drive very, very carefully. Moving uh, over to Johannesburg and Diepkloof to be specific, there's a stationary vehicle on the N12 westbound, and that's before Galuli's interchange. Now, the middle lane is closed, so again, if you're in the area, you can expect delays from Johannesburg. Let's head over to Cape Town now and Balville to be specific. There is congestion on the N1 inbound. Now, this is at Yip de Yacha, and uh, please, if you are in the area, please allow for more travel time. But again, for anybody heading out on the roads, buckle up, stay safe, and plan accordingly. From the roads, let's head to the sky now and find out what's happening when it comes to weather. Reporting on weather news now, disaster management teams across KwaZulu-Natal have been put on high alert as heavy rains are expected to continue lashing the province. Now, an orange level 6 warning has been issued for disruptive rain leading to flooding of roads and settlements, damage to property, as well as major disruption of traffic flow along the coast interior of the King Tswayo and the Umkumyakuda districts of KwaZulu-Natal. Now, a yellow level 2 warning has also been issued for disruptive rain in places over the Ugu district, the Durban metro, the eastern parts of Umgumgundlovu, Ilembu district, uh, the western parts of King Echwayo, and the eastern parts of Zululand district. Now, on top of this, also the Umvoti local municipality will be affected. And the western and central interior of Limpopo has received a yellow level 2 warning. Now, this for severe thunderstorms, damaging winds, large amounts of small hail, and heavy downpours. Well, we've seen our weather news, but let's see exactly what those temperatures look like in your side of town.
absolutely love it. It looks like a lot of rain in certain parts of the country. But more importantly, it's time to look at this special part of the morning. So the question is, does the sunrise encapsulate the beauty of nature? Does it put a spring in your step? Well, you can stand a chance to win 100 bucks by sending in your sunrise photo this morning. And it's simple. Best photo wins, and it'll be shown live on air. And don't forget to include a short story or weather report or even a voice note from your part of town. And to enter, don't forget the number is 063-408-8863. So, without further ado, for this 8 o'clock edition, our winner for the hour is Demi in Hermanos. And look at this beautiful shot that she shared with us. Also coming through with a message saying, me and my mother-in-law are taking our daily walk in our beautiful town, Hermanos. We are so blessed to live in such a breathtaking town. You really Really, truly are. I love how Manus is just encapsulated by an ocean with a mountain right next to it and some of the most beautifully iconic situations that you can find yourself in. Demi, thank you for sending this one in. And again, Mzanzi, I hope you've been incentivized to keep them coming. Do it all again tomorrow morning. So send those uh, beautiful pictures through to our number and we can hopefully make you a winner. <laughs> oh, well, listen, we are taking the quickest of breaks on your Feel Good Breakfast show. When we get back, we'll take a look at how to handle picky eaters. Parents, if you're struggling to get your little ones to eat, we might have a solution for you. And then we have the Isibane Se Africa Choir in studio hailing from Kailicha. And they're going to give us a quick teaser of what to expect after the break. Just a little teaser. Welcome to the discussion as we hone in on our little ones and what they love or not love eating. We all love our food and yes, have our preferences, but when it comes to young children specifically, these developing preferences can be a fickle process. And here to help us understand picky eating is one of my favorites, Kath McGaw, a registered dietitian and someone who cares a lot about everyone else's kids and parents actually. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you do it for the kids or the parents actually. Uh, Kath, great to have you here. Am I labeling it too quickly saying picky eater? Yeah, I think there's a range of picky eaters uh -huh. and I think you bet at some point all children are gonna go through a picky eating phase. The question is when do you panic about it or when do you kind of just let it ride out? Because a lot of the way we handle that initial picky eating moment is going to set the tone for future picky eating incidences. Ah, you see, it's kind of like a food culture okay. that's starting to emerge. Yeah. So when you say there's a natural phase, you know, and, and you can see your child will flip-flop mm -hmm. what their favorite meal was, like, you know, mac and cheese. Easy peasy mac and cheese. If you had a song about it, it was like our favorite meal. My son won't even eat gags. Yes. So it's, I can see it's not by choice. Mm -hmm. When does that cycle typically kind of run through? What age? So there's so much development happening around food and taste buds and growing. So you find that they change, like you say, their preferences, their texture, awareness changes, and that is common between the age of 18 months 
up to about five years mm. is your typical picky eating phases. It gets, it's about 60 to 70% will of children will experience picky eating. So your child isn't different from the rest of the kids no. and being typically difficult because they, it's not that. So they all go through because they are adjusting and they are, and then they'll go through another phase of figuring it out. And it's interesting because those taste buds that um, taste and enjoy those more umani flavors mm. really only come into being around the teenage years. So your child, I always say to parents, it's a whole journey of learning to eat. Obviously, if you've got a child that's got a particular condition or concern or and deficiency yeah. or that, there's, there's big concerns around that. But it's really how we handle the picky eating that is going to determine how long it lasts. I mean, this is all good and well, but we've got the small matter of growing bodies and growing brains that need the nutrients, and it always feels like, for me, they'll eat the dry toast perfectly fine, but when it comes to a beautiful piece of meat and some beautifully cooked veggies that look like the best meal on earth to me, no, no. Why is it the protein and the veggies, the healthy stuff that they have difficulty with? Is it a texture thing? Is it the umami thing, as you've just highlighted? I think it's a combination. I think it's often when we serve these foods. You know, mm. they're often served at the end of the day when children are t totally sensory overloaded. They're satiated, yeah. They've just had a whole busy day. And now, if you think about the foods you've mentioned, they are the most challenging to chew, the protein foods, mm. because chewing a piece of meat takes a lot of energy. And they require a lot of energy. They require process. a lot of energy. And then the vegetables are beautiful, they, but they're lots of color and again lots of different textures so again it's how when we give these foods that are really important and how we give them there are easier ways to give meats and proteins that are pretty much pre-digested yeah, like, more palatable and exactly a bit more, um, but more easier to, to manage yeah I love that um, I suppose you've had to dish out a lot of advice in the space and you've also lived the experience mm -hmm. what advice do you have for parents that are struggling with picky eaters right now. Is there anything you can do or do you need to just kind of so get over yourself? Yeah, I think it's important to manage the nutrition. So make sure that you are confident that they are getting over a course of a week a variety of nutrients. If they're not, you might need to give a healthy nutritional shake or you might need to give a nutritional supplement in the form of a and multivitamin. Excuse me, interjecting, what is that healthy balance? Is it like one good protein a day, some good greens in a day, and a little bit of fruit? What, what's that medium? Yeah, that so it doesn't, striving? again, it doesn't necessarily have to be every single day because I think the important thing is children kind of meet their requirements over a space of a week to even For a month. Sure, yeah. So they might have like a protein week. I, and I live in a 48 hour cycle, yeah. I know this now. So your kids even probably even exactly. longer with their so four I think, bodies. I yeah. think it's over the course of the week. Do they get something from the fruit and veggie group? Do they get something from the protein group do they get something from the energy group um, of food and then if they are doing that on a regular basis kind of intermittently then you probably will find that they will be fine they're, they're being yeah. looked after i love that well i think we we need to see this put into practice when it comes to luring our little ones into a healthier snack i think we have got you covered kath is not going anywhere and i don't think you must either after the break um, she's going to be joining us in the kitchen to share a super yummy it looks like future life chocolate muffin recipe that i have a feeling the kids and yes parents will absolutely love <laughs> Well, there is such a beautiful energy in studio and it has to be the choir from Ekaya Licha and they go by the name Isibane, Isibane Se Africa, which simply translates to the light of Africa. And one of the songs in the album is a song titled Atandwe in collaboration with one of the best rappers in Cape Town, Bravo LaRue. And Isibane, tell me about that collaboration. Wow, that was a blessing. Uh, let me just give you a, a history. Yeah. That Bravo is from Kailicha, and his manager, Zulani Jama, is a choir member of Hispani. When he was young, he came and joined Hispani. I think he was 12. Oh. And he went to study other things and to learn music. So when he thing is ready, he came back and plowed to the choir with his artist to Bravo. And just the day, because we were going to the studio just to record an album, a gospel album, Pio, we got on studio, and something just happened. We decided, you know what, let's just do a music that will talk to us all in the choir, something that can give everyone each an identity of who they are. So that's when we came with that, and then Bravo came in the studio, we recorded the Atanda song, 
and the more. Oh, that is incredible. I love it when things like this happen, when it, everything Magic. just falls Magic. into place. Magic's the best way to describe it. Now, I know that you've recently done a tour across the country. How did the tour go? <laughs> it was good. It was just a <laughs> blessing. We went around um, uh, Krapo, Harmanas, Ceres, and we wanted to give everyone Isibane to feel that mm. feel of the light. And our plan is to go national tours, international tours all over. We want to go to their places and let people to feel this magic that you guys on studio today. We're are feeling, feeling that energy, and yes. Most people are, are feeling it when they're in the waterfront and all our gigs when we incorporate events and all other events. We want to tour Isibane internationally and nationally for the people to get the taste of the best. Oh, well, listen, we are definitely spoiled here getting the taste of the best. Everyone is looking so incredible. The Thank energy you. is infectious. Well, here on your Feel Good Breakfast show is Isibane Se Africa with their song, Jehovah. Take it away. Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah.
awesome. You feel the energy. It is absolutely real, and it's not stopping there. We've got more performances coming at you, and more to look forward to on your Feel Good Breakfast show. We're talking about chocolate muffins for kids, and then this incredible panel behind me. Talk about beauty. We've encapsulated, but we're going to be talking about something different when it comes to beauty. How to change the standards and the norms of what we understand beauty to be. All that and a whole lot more on your Feel Good Breakfast show in just a bit. We'll see you there. Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso. Now, I love this part where we get to sit down and have a genuine conversation because we all have different definitions of beauty and what beauty means. For some of us, it might be the way we look. For others, the way we feel. But for most of us, it's a combination of two. As they say, true beauty shines from within. And in recent years, we've seen more individuals rising above the beauty standards by embracing their imperfections and owning their own kind of beautiful and we are here for that softer approach. Now, we've brought a panel together. We have beauty writer and stylist Megan Pedro, our beauty editor, Knox Mafu, and registered counsellor Kelly Jacobs with us in studio. Ladies, I love how we all have our own way of defining beauty. So let's, let's start there. Knox, how yes. do you define beauty? I think it speaks to your essence, right? So beauty really is something that can change across times, across generations. Obviously, people think of things that are quite like physical and quite like on the nose. But I really think beauty in itself speaks to who you are as a person, what, what, how you make people feel. So it really becomes an essence and an aura of who you are. Are. Um, and I think that's for me has become quite important to me as I kind of understand my own beauty or other people's beauty in life. And it's all about understanding your mm. own, I think, Absolutely. recognizing that first. Yes. Kelly, for you, how would you define beauty? Exactly as Knox just said mm. now, it's that essence and that characteristics and traits that make you actually um, somebody that can be approachable, for mm. example. Mm -hmm. Somebody that can also just put all of those positive qualities out there into the world and how you interact and treat people and also importantly how you see yourself that makes us beautiful. Yeah. Because those qualities, it's quite captivating. Definitely, definitely. And for you, Megan? Honestly, it's such a loaded concept, yeah. beauty, right? Because yeah. there's so many different facets to it, I right? Think so. I think that as we talk about the physical, there's a popular TV show that, you know, love is blind where it's not about your physical mm. it's about the inside and so often we have to take a bit of time to get to know someone on the inside and how beautiful they really are because we are naturally captivated at you know at first glance yes. by someone yes. naturally yeah. everyone is how we present food all of that beauty in everything mm -hmm. so kind of beauty goes so deep within and I love the word essence like yeah. essence is just such a great yeah. yeah it really encapsulates yeah. it beautifully yeah. but it's so interesting to your point about like you know how you know when people see someone and if you get to know them it's mm. crazy how they can look different to you you know what I mean goodness. if someone is like you know typically beautiful isn't mm. a 10 out of 10 mm. symmetry and everything mm. but the person inside is really yeah. not great for some reason like their essence and all oh, of that starts wow. to change how you experience them you don't so find them attractive exactly mm -hmm. so i feel like those things are so important but like i think like shows like that always kind of challenge your kind of in like your internal 
dialogue of how you engage with something. So it's yeah. so important to start from the bottom. Right? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Kelly, do you think us as society need to be more gentle towards ourselves when it comes to, and in my opinion, unrealistic beauty expectations that we're now seeing on Instagram? We're yeah. seeing, you know, back in the day it was in the magazines, now it's on yeah. Instagram. Mm -hmm. For sure, we definitely have room to be more gentle because a lot of our molds and perceptions of what we think beauty actually is comes from all of those external images that's put out there. And I love the shift and change that's happening where representation is important and it matters mm -hmm. because we see more definitions of beauty by the authenticity. Instagram initially was the platform where we prioritized all of those staged sort of imagery of how our life should be the highlight reel but it's changing mm -hmm. also with the rise of TikTok there is more of a drive towards authenticity yes. mm -hmm. so I definitely think that there's room for us to be more gentle about what we actually define beauty as being mm -hmm. and our own natural beauty needs to also be the thing that shines through yeah. Yeah. yeah how do you incorporate that into your own timeline Megan if we are now talking about you know, the things we see online. Have you started changing the type of accounts you follow? Or do you have a way of just protecting yourself whenever you do share something of your own life? This is quite an interesting topic because Clem and I are both, you know, in that public sense at the same time. But in terms of beauty, my work life, I work at a women's beauty magazine. Yeah. So for me, it's very important on our team. We talk about it so often because all of us look completely different. Mm -hmm. As South Africans, we look completely different. Sure. And that's the thing that really sets us apart is that we get a lot of, uh, you know, the, f uh, the feel and inspiration from Western beauty. Mm -hmm. But we are sitting on a gold mine here of different shapes, different colors, different everything. It is so beautiful. So. Coming in from that and representing all different faces is very important in our magazine. But then in my personal life, I really find it that vulnerability is so beautiful mm -hmm. too. And that is what I'm finding on social media is that we don't have to edit our photos in every single app. We don't have to only show the highlights of our lives. It really is beautiful to be authentically you. Yeah, yeah. 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 it really is. Yes. And with that vulnerability, I think you also want to, at the same time, protect younger girls yes. or younger individuals that's now using social media yeah. platforms to express themselves. Mm -hmm. Knox, yeah. perhaps you can answer this for me first. What advice would you give young ladies in particular yes. when it comes to the perception of beauty? Yeah. I think, you know, I went to a girls' school and I think yeah. for a very long time, you know, I had very warped perceptions of what beauty was, from body image to like, you know, even my skin tone, you know, it came very late in my life where I really like embraced um, my skin tone. But I think it's important to understand that like beauty can also be expression so I don't want to mm. limit people's ideas of if you want to play with makeup if you want to dress up and do all of that stuff you really can and and define beauty for yourself in that way mm. but to also understand that beauty is growth it's essentially who you are if you move further and further away from who you are you're going to lose that very thing that's yourself so if anything and I had an opportunity to even talk to myself when I was younger is to just lean in lean into the things that make yourself and actually just draw more more of it build that confidence mm -hmm. in the stuff that makes you different because I'm telling you it's the thing that will set you apart definitely mm -hmm. well listen I said you're gonna enjoy this conversation <laughs> our incredible panel we have Knox Kelly and Megan they are not going anywhere because we're gonna continue to choose soft when it comes yeah. to how we define beauty and I want to know how important is self-care to you mm -hmm. let us know on our social media and otherwise you know you don't have to go anywhere because like I said they are not going anywhere this conversation will continue shortly. Welcome back to the kitchen and we continue to deal with our fussy eaters and whether your child is a fussy eater or not I just know that this next recipe will be a win and it will get their stamp of approval. We are making the classic chocolate muffin but with a yummy and very healthy twist and here to show us how to make it is Kath McGraw, a registered dietitian but you're also someone who really cares about I think the, the practical elements of being a parent, not just the great nice-to-haves, the ideas, the notions, the true north, none of that. It's about how do we actually do it mm -hmm. now? How do we get that nutrients into my child's little belly? And this looks like a great idea. Oh, this is such a wonderful recipe. And I think the, the trick is, is that you can put a whole lot of good nutrition in something that most kids won't turn their noses up to. Also, maybe, as you were saying, if a child's kind of had a long day, they don't need a mm. massive meal mm -hmm. later in the day, but they've got to push through the last few hours of the evening or coming back from a big swimming day or something like that, okay. this is a great way to get, as you say, a real kind of mm. shot of the healthy nutrients in, and it looks like it's going to taste amazing. Okay, so where okay. do we begin? So do you want to do the dry ingredients? I can do so we've that. got a cup of nice stone ground flour, and we're going nice. to use the 
Future Life Smart Instant Oats, Oats which are okay. full of good fiber. Uh, half a cup of our cocoa, okay, right and then we've got some of our baking powder and our salt, and you mix that in, and while you're doing that, I'm gonna mix in banana. Now look at this, isn't this Ooh. amazing for that little one that doesn't want, this is a whole banana we've mashed and, up. And I'm using, I'm doing this sort of thing with my brown bananas that yes, still have a great exactly. flavor profile, they just don't look so lacquer. 100%, and, we, and we've got some yogurt here, so we're getting a bit of protein, some good calcium, um, some great pre and probiotics, which just fits in so well with the whole Future Life cereal concept. And uh, we've got some delicious egg for more protein, so. And I think it's, it really is worth saying, because what I've loved, and I think you and I share this, in terms of how Future Life has been drafted into my own and my family's eating habits is, I know whole food is always a win, but there are certain sense. situations, timings, resources, that doesn't allow for that. And when you need to get the right balance of nutrients and what they say is in here, you've proven is in here. Correct. And this <laughs> you is, know what you're getting. This yeah. is why I really find this brand is something that I love working with, love recommending to my patients, because it really is what you say you get. And, and, and the fact that it's endorsed by some of my favorite athletes and the sevens guys, you know, that has helped, I would admit. So, this kind of feels like we have access to professional dietitians um, just on the shelf. <laughs> <It laughs> Absolutely, does feel like that. that's, and that's exactly what this is. So you mix the wet ingredients in with the dry, and it's so easy. And you know what's wonderful, Graham, is that if you're a busy mom, you can just make up a batch and freeze this. Ah, you see. And then you just pull one out. Um, and so it's not like you're having to stand in the kitchen every day baking. 100%. And these would... recipes freeze so easily, which is great. And, and let the kids help you make them and yes. choose the things that they want to put in. So if you know your child's not a banana fan or something there, I mean, incidentally, is there another... Absolutely, puree apple. Puree apple. Oh, puree pear works brilliantly. Ooh. And so it's great for your little one that's like avoiding fruits and veggies at that the moment. Texture, you can that actually, flavor, exactly. Yeah. So that's there we've really got cool. our that, wonderful that, you, mix. They each get to make their own batch. They can choose, okay, what, what fruit do you want to put in this one? And as soon as they are in mutually invested in that, Correct. they will eat it. Or they would at least make an attempt. Otherwise, you know, their little ego takes a dent. It, um, yeah. And it's, you think I'm joking, but this it's an absolute life hack when it comes to your kids. Let them be involved in the process, please. Oh, and this has got the crunch, Graham. This is these multi-grain pops and using the chocolate. <sighs> So, so wonderful. No, this really With is a problem. Fiber. I will eat the whole thing <laughs> in one go. You don't understand. I'll have like four or five bowls and finish. when I have a bowl, I have a bowl. Because it um, is just it's, so delicious. It's the flavor but texture combo. Just full of good nutrition and fiber and absolutely yum, yum. delicious. And sprinkle on top. And like you say, if your little one's helping you in the kitchen, they can just pop it on oh. and there you go. And then you pop it in the oven. And 20 minutes later, you have delicious muffins. And your house smells absolutely amazing. amazing. I love it. And this is a jumping off point. This is an opportunity for you to experiment with your own kids. You know your flavor palette. You know your kids' flavor palette. And if nothing else, just to get them to eat something, just yeah. one thing that's healthy that day, Correct. we've got you covered. Correct. Love awesome. your work. Thank you so, so much. Do yourself a flavor and your kids as well and make them these delicious Future Life chocolate muffins. They look absolutely amazing. I'm going to pack a bucky for my kids. You can get the full recipe at futurelife.com along with a whole host of very healthy culinary inspiration. But if you missed any of these very easy steps, take a look at this. <laughs>
Oh, I absolutely love that. Now that the bellies are full, let's fill up the rest of your senses. And there's so much to still look forward to. We've got our incredible panel still standing by talking about beauty. That's Knox, Kelly, and Megan. And uh, the conversation is going to get even deeper, but oh so much more pertinent. And then, of course, Isibana Se Africa, the light of uh, Africa, the choir are here to do another dance, do another rendition that's going to uplift your spirits. And if you want to know what I'm talking about, here's a little teaser for you. It's my feel-good show. Oh, welcome back. You are just in time as we've got our panel to continue our discussion around the power of self-care. Now, our panel today, we have beauty writer and stylist Megan Pedro, our beauty editor, Knox Mafu, and registered counsellor, Kelly Jacobs. Ladies, it's so great to have you here, and I've loved our first conversation, and I'm happy we get to continue this. Kelly, as a registered counselor, I think you probably see this more firsthand when people come to you with their insecurities. What is the best advice you can give someone in how to handle or approach their own insecurities? I definitely see it in the day-to-day -day practice. Um, every single one of us sitting here, we all have our own insecurities that we also hold. But I think the best advice I can give you is also to get to know yourself. There's so many messages we're constantly receiving from the external world. And when you actually have that sense of self-awareness, you can recognize when those insecurities get triggered mm -hmm. and how you deal with it best is definitely in counseling. But a simple act of journaling can help you become so aware of what those insecurities are, where it probably formed, and how you can also deal with it best. But the first step is the awareness and getting to know yourself. And that's always the hardest. It's the admitting, oh my gosh, this is my own insecurity. And once you do that, you actually realize how what ripple effect it can have. Yeah. Knox, do you yes. perhaps find, you know, is there a, a, this is a safe space yes, and insecurity you would love to share with us yeah. and how are you dealing with it? I mean, I think, you know, our life changes, you know, and like you're saying, like our influences in terms of what we consume, you know, so maybe closer to summer, I'll worry about my body, right? I'll mm -hmm. worry like, am I bikini ready? But then I have to realize that bikini ready is the bikini, is the body that I give my bikini, right? So it's things like that you, you have to go through. Earlier, I mentioned that my skin tone used to be a thing, you know, at a time where lighter skin was a, a more preferred kind of beauty idea. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's really kind of getting to terms with like, what is it that I don't like about myself? Is it because I genuinely don't or I've been told that something is wrong with the way that I look? Mm. And so obviously like if you've got access maybe to therapy or even like journaling and sometimes journaling can be hard because to face that kind of truth about yourself can be really hard. But I think once you get over that and journaling can be a voice note to yourself. It could be, you know, doing different ways of writing is something that's a bit too hard. And I realize sometimes that dialogue with yourself can really show you the things that you're seeing about yourself 
and then you can get to the point of like, okay, so is that a me thing or something that I've been told to worry about, mm. um, even if I didn't necessarily worry about it before? And that reflecting is yeah. so important. Mm. Megan, when it comes to self-care, I mm. feel like you're the queen of self-care. Yes. I know that your bathtub has one of those big whisks so you can have extra bubbles. <laughs> well, yes, and it does a full whisk, yes, 100%. Oh, and I know even recently now for your anniversary, you guys had a spa oh. day. Oh. I love, so any, chance to do an indulgent self-care, let me tell you. I'm oh, <laughs> it, it, it hits the spot. So why is self-care and, and just having that routine so important for you? What, what difference does it make to your outlook on the day you had or perhaps the week you've had? So coming down to essentially what is beauty again, beauty is really the like, essence of how you feel. I really, I, I believe that. Because how you feel and how you internalize things and how you take on things that you know you go through in your life, that is the light that you are shining. And your light is essentially what, what beauty is. Mm -hmm. So if you are taking care of yourself, if you're taking a few minutes in the morning to journal, to get to know yourself, you can present a better person mm. to society, right? So you you step out with a better foot already. But I mean, I'm not I'm not partial to a bit of a face mask <laughs> and making yourself yeah. really feel great, you know? I mean, again, working at a beauty mm. magazine, it's so great that in, in the magazine, it's split already into kind of the half of, you know, the, the, the side that's put forward to us as what kind of makeup we need and all of that. But then the other part is so about self-care and about that journey inside and about that, you know, journey of, of how to make yourself feel better, mm. whether that is... Uh, a 40 minute night routine that Clem has to stay far out of, <laughs> okay? Uh, lavender essence and a salt lamp and a whole thing, but it, it, it gears me up for the next day and that's just, you know, essentially. And that's what care. you need to yeah. top up your own essence mm -hmm. and it's so important that you know that. Mm -hmm. Now, we want to obviously inspire young ladies to, to take care of themselves, but it's always such a catch-22 because you want kids to stay kids for as long as possible, mm -hmm. but we all grow up. So from what age would you recommend, Kelly, you know, that young, individuals start practicing their own self-care routines? You are never too young to start. Mm. I've got a niece that is four years old and a mom routinely every morning speaks affirmations with her so that she can oh. have that self-image that's oh. developed mm. from young already because like we had mentioned and said mm. earlier, your definition of beauty comes from all of that external yeah. and internal messaging. Oh. So I think for young kids, you're never too young to start. I mean, mm. something as simple as affirmations in the morning can help develop their sense of self and identity mm. that they are important they are worthy of taking care of themselves because when you actually take care of yourselves just like megan mentioned you put out good energy into the mm. world too. you do yeah. you, do. you yeah. stay with that feeling i think that that's also important is that you keep that messaging going my niece yeah. is two and a half and she does not need any help with feeling confident oh. how you mm. but we we like you know as the family want to harness that as yes. she grows older yeah. because it's so important because I, I mean the way we looked at ourselves at five years yeah. old to ten years old to 14 mm. to now so completely different mm. yeah mm. um the imaging that we kind of seen the friends that we're around mm. the light that we have within us mm. has has changed yeah. so so drastically yeah 100%. and and you don't want to dim that light yeah. no Absolutely. you do not Ladies, this is a conversation I can continue <laughs> with, but I we have it. run out of time. Mm. Thank you for joining. Megan, Kelly, Knox, it was wonderful to unpack this, mm. to see your thoughts on beauty and self-care. And I want you to join our conversation, choose soft, and, you know, join our conversation around soft um, online. And you can also let us know how important self-care is to you. That hashtag, choose soft, is the one to use with our big Soleil Click 3 or the Click 3 Sensitive which is enriched with aloe vera for the silkiest results on your skin. Oh, well, listen, we are obviously in a lot of excitement. It's so great that the girls were able to be here. And if you've missed any of our conversation, it is available for you on YouTube. Oh, well, I think we, not that we need more motivation today, but we've had a lot. So I think let's yeah. stay on that train right now and raise an interesting question. I think oftentimes our big break, that, that life-defining moment is just around the corner waiting for us to negotiate the bend and get there. But when that learning curve proves a little too tedious, a little too steep, <laughs> that's when we backpedal and just yeah. reverse. <laughs> it and really is, but not realizing in that moment how close we actually were to the break. So maybe this is a reminder, some little motivational moments for you, and this is our motivational moment of the day. Check it out.
make sense. Oh, I, man, love I, was that. Actually, I was trying to explain this to my son, who's very much, it's unfair. I don't have, but Georgie has. Yeah. Two lessons, well, a few lessons actually coming from there. I think one thing that's certainly pertinent in my life, comparison impedes Ooh, focus. Yeah. Focus on your own journey, not on someone else's, and tr patience. It is a virtue, and I'm saying that to myself more than anyone else, man. I think it's a reminder to not give up. Just keep on pushing. Your moment is just around the corner, and when the time is right, things will happen for you. Yeah, <laughs> man, we absolutely love that, and things are happening for our choir this morning, and with good reason. Isibani South Africa, they're an incredible group of young people doing something truly special, and their journey is only getting started. One more performance from them after the break. It's my feel-good oh, Welcome back to our beautiful new space. Yes, we are still reveling in our gorgeous new studio. And I'm so glad that we've had Isibanese Africa, this amazing choir, to christen our studio and bring it to life with some beautiful, beautiful energy. Absolutely love it. And under Siwe, I want to call you Sissy because you're quite young. But, but you're a mama. <laughs> you are. That's <laughs> yes, the, the bottom line. You've, you've become that for these incredible young people who have just blown it out the park today. So well done. Do you get a moment just for you every now and then to take stock of what you've done with this incredible group? A lot. There's that time when I look back 20 years back and I see Isimano growing. I think when I was in Poland, when I performed for Prince Harry and Megan, when oh. I performed for Sir Richard, Desmond Tutu Foundation, Nikan Valabound, and all those people, when Utando brings tourists, the Travel Cafe Cape Town, all those people are giving us work. When I look back, when I started in my mom's garage with 11 members, small as that, and now yeah. us owning our own space, getting bookings all over. Even tonight, we're performing at City Hall. City ICC became our home. Waterfront is our home. When I look back in all that, I'm like, and the Siwe, we Zile, we Kobile Mdanomdu, work hard and work more. Yeah, every step, just one foot in front of the other. I absolutely love it. How can people book you? How can people plug into this? If they can go to our website, Isibane Se Africa. So when you spell our name, Isibane Se Africa with K, our website has everything and all our projects. And all digital platforms have our music and all social media has Isibane Se Africa, the hashtag, everything is Isibane Se Africa. Please keep those booking coming. So that yeah, it's corporate yes. season now, baby. It's corporate <laughs> season now. And I think people need Definitely. elation. We need to feel this emotion. I absolutely love it. What have you got in store for us for your final performance? 
Spetu Atandwe. Atandwe is my son, he's two. So oh. this Guido song, it's my son's uh, uh, name. And also when they started at schools singing the song, the speech, I'm like, okay, let's do something magic, but we put the rap and all other things so that, of course, we can all love the song. So we have that for you now. I love that, and it's got a bit of street cred with Bravo LaRue involved as well. Oh, one last time this morning, I'm going to say thank you. We are so grateful to having had you in our space. I feel like we've been blessed today. I feel like our beautiful space has been blessed. One last time this morning, this is the Isibanese Africa Choir with Atanwe. Take it away. <laughs> I think embodying everything that means authenticity, that means beauty, that means natural raw talent, and that's embodied by this incredible choir, the Light of Africa. Please take a bow, you incredible people. We love you. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Have an amazing day. Adios, muchachos. Love you. Another feel-good production.